This is the If More, Let's Divide podcast. Ciao, ciao, Charlie. We are back again, another episode, the If More, Let's Divide podcast. As usual, we with my co-host, Fred. You already know what it. What happened? Charlie, bro. What happened, man? Charlie. I mean, another episode, and this time, different setup. Yeah. First time we are having two guests in season two. Mm-hmm. Season one, we had two guests. Shout out to Omon Blanks and, and Billy. Billy, yeah. Yeah, and there's a second time we are having two guests on the pod. And we, we couldn't separate them because they used to be a unit. Yeah. It, it was a union um, back in the day, you know, before all the Gen Z stuff. Uh, <laughs> legendary. Before, before most of you guys, you know, were born, they were doing it large, they were doing it big, and... On the pod, we like, you know, highlighting, you know, things from back in the day. Yeah. So, um, without further ado, guys, dun, 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 one dun. of my favorite groups in Ghana to ever, you know, touch come a mic. Of Ghana. Yeah, Charlie. It no be say be hype. You know, they could match up with everyone back in the day when it, when it came to rap. You know, Alfred, do you disagree? I think they're on the Ghana Hip Hop Mount Rushmore for sure. Because me growing up as a hip hop fan, listening to all the different rappers, they were literally the first Ghanaian rap group on the scene that made you feel like that sense of pride where you turn on the screen and you're like, oh shit, these guys are for real. So without a doubt for me, they're the dopest, one of the dopest and definitely on the Mount Rushmore for me. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, Help me welcome the talking, legendary, the legendary talking drums. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Chai, talking drums, a beku and kweku tea. Well, I go on. What did happen? Chai, we did as we as we find you people today. That we, we go have go, yeah, we go have yeah. go. Well, chai, on. chai, off the bat. No problem. When did you guys form um, talking drums? Uh, I'm gonna say probably we were, we were in high school. We were in high school together. Uh, me and Kweku both go uh, Dada B school GIS, uh, and I say Dada B for for good reasons, bad or whatever. But our, our, both of our parents taught there, as all of us know. You know what I mean? A lot of our oh, wow. parents. I I didn't know your parents. Your 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 mom or your dad. My mother. Mom. My mom. Oh, oh wow. Uh, Auntie, so when she moved Auntie from, Linda. Yeah, when we moved from America. Yeah, she got a job there. You know what I mean? One of those so, uh, strong, strong woman things yeah. to make sure her kids could do what, what she could do. So a lot of a lot of our interactions was because all of our mothers did that. So Panji, Kweku, me, a lot of other people, all of our mothers taught there. And this is how kind of we got into the GIS system. So we became that I'll be by, so, so by wait, fault apparently, of Apparently, if mm -hmm. your parents is a staff there, you don't pay school fees. Listen, apparently, that's a parent, so that apparently they ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> I was too young for that. <laughs> I was I was in GIS off scholarship. So. Yeah, through and through. Yeah, man, I took that's the dope. test. I did good. They let me in. I earned my stripes. Yeah, simple, yeah, simple. Man. But really, really, talking drums started out as um, chief in the tribe. No, Jay Gotti. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were in a group. Shouts to Jay. Yeah, shouts big to up, Jay. Big we, up, big up, We were Jay. in a group with Jay Gotti. It was like a, a, a family affair. Because mm. it was him, his brother. Eventually, him, his brother became a part of it. It was just me on my side. But it was just family, generally. And f from there, because, you know, GIS is a, it's a UN charter school. Mm. So a lot of people... Like their parents were stationed in Ghana for a small period of time. Yeah, yeah. So when people started leaving and leaving from the group, that's when eventually we stayed behind because we were GIS teacher kids, and that's how we created Talking Drums eventually. Yeah. But 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 even from this inclination, let me go say, ultimately, ultimately, it started from talent shows, high school talent, talent shows, shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dancers. We we wanted to be fly. We were trying to find our way in the world. Mm. These dudes were like mm. athletic. Yeah. Some some of us were not, so we had to rap. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we all found out little, found, little like talent shows, okay. as as we all do. You know what I mean? But, but, but which year though? 
I'm, um, I'm going to be form, form three, form four. So I'm I say like talking drums was like form three, form four, but I believe. So this is like 91? Che- so Chico tried. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like 1990. <laughs> yeah. First of all, are we doing this live? Like, I, this is very age like. Flinkstones. Yeah. Flinkstones. Yeah, but we still wow. swing boulders. Yeah, but it's all 90, 90s, early 90s. 90s. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. We, 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 uh, our, our bones have been on air for uh, yeah. quite some time. Yeah. So um, let's backtrack a little bit to pe- personal, you know, stuff. Yeah. You know, um, I, I be, um, did you did you grow, grow up here? I was born in uh, Philadelphia. And um, when did you move, move here? At uh, 11, uh, 12 years old. 12 oh. years old. Uh, my, mom, my mother and father made a decision. Uh, <laughs> as, as many, many, many African people, and their partners' parents make decisions when they see, when they when they come face to face with the reality of what the West and America type of is for their growth of their children versus what they left. They make a decision, and usually it's you got to come home. And so I, I went through that process of you you got you got to come home so we can save you from yourself from uh yeah from an <laughs> annihilation. Yeah, and quick with you. Um, I was about four or five years old. Uh, we moved to Ithaca, New York. My father was in Cornell. I told you my father is a professor. My <laughs> <laughs> father, our father was in Cornell. So we, we, it was like for us Ghanaians, we we went wherever our parents went. Yeah, yeah. So like around like 11, 12 years old, then I moved back to Ghana the same way. Yeah. Man, I wanted to stay in Yankee. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Why do? Um. At that young age, you at, wanted to. Stay. Yeah, because. It was like the the narrative that was painted of Africa was starving children in in Ethiopia, mm. you know. So when me coming back, I didn't know whether they'd be, I'd be afforded the the the, the pleasantries that I was used to, like uh, cinema, TV, TV, shit, like- hot dog, you know, burgers, that type of thing. Yeah. So for me, it was like this is unfamiliar territory. And I don't know how I'll be received in this environment. So there was a lot of trepidation around, like me coming back. But Charlie, mm-hmm. when the man says you have to go, you have to go. So we left, and here we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But so I'm first. I'm first generation hybrid. <laughs> first generation. Hybrid. First generation hybrid. Yeah. <laughs> I say, hybrid car. <laughs> hybrid, you know what I'm saying? I say that yeah. to say, like, um, so um, Kwame Crew and them, they went to uh, the States, they went to university, yes, but they went as um, adults who had, had their culture yeah. together. Yeah, they yeah. left with their culture. We left and became a part of a, a, an alternate culture, you know, a, alongside our own. I'm my, 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 our own indigenous. So my parents, I'm the, uh, me and my, my siblings, Ajua, all of them, we're the first to travel. We're oh, the right. first, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We're the first in my clan to travel. Oh, and shit. Do, Which in yes. itself is ill. Yeah, that's Ill. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a blessing. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I pat my parents on the back for having the foresight. Was it, was it their line of work that took them? My father was going to, he was getting his master's and his doctorate in Cornell. Okay. University, and he's a tutu also. Let's not let's not let's not yeah. take away the Ashanti. Ashanti yeah, that, that the tutu tutu. He's a yeah, tutu. Yeah. Mm. Oh wow. Yeah. Royal my, blood. My father shies away from those things. Yeah. Mm. Like, <laughs> so um, back in Ghana, um, Abe. Yes, boss. Um, how did you feel like when you first moved here, and you were enrolled in GIS? Was it different? Was it the same? Like. How was the feel, feel, feeling like? Wait, did you, you, you came back? straight to Ghana to GIS? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, oh, None of us I, did. I didn't. Oh. He got it worse than me. Yeah. I mean, I went to university primary, so, like, he went mm. to boarding school. When I first moved back from Philadelphia, you got to understand, I was, I was 12 years old. So you got to understand, this is as, as young boys become men. It's like, this is my first uh, open my eye to the doorway of my hood. I started learning about Jordans and... Fast, right. fast, fast. You know yeah. what I mean? It took me about three years to convince my parents to give me Jordans because this was, I had to save my allowance up. You know what I mean? 
and then they uh, so when I came back, they sent me straight to Infantspil. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. So yeah. my and, and yeah. my and my elders it's, it's and cool. my fathers, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Infantspil, Adisado. You know, this is Ghanaian culture. This is like the this is our Yales. This is our yeah. harvest. This is this is the things. Um, so I was sent straight to Infantspil in boarding school, uh, which was a uh, quite a culture shock. Damn. Uh, because my parents yeah. from so yeah I, was, I went from what house? Jo- I went from Jordans to open toe sandals it was quite disturbing <laughs> yeah. it was fucked it was fucked yeah. yeah. and, 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 and we're back to open toe yeah. sandals yeah. yeah oh and then I did Sabapiko no, no he's Sab- actually like hmm? what yeah what, he what has he's a Sabapiko Sabapiko, Sabapiko oh. lower dorm really 4, 4 a.m. bro I'm in Philly 4 a.m. when I got I used to wake up at 4 a.m. to sweep dirt so you just to sweep the come back back yeah. to sweep dirt. No, no, no. But I will tell you this: as crazy as it was, it, that's what taught me that you can be alone in your life and you're gonna survive. So as crazy as it was, in hindsight, it's it one of the best things that's ever happened. Well, but seems- but long story short, I stayed there for a year. I lost so much weight because when I came from America, I was a bit chubby. But with the still in the Yankee vibes, you know, you see me in the Yankee Yankee. I mean, it was a lot of the seniors. You know how the yeah, 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 it's, mil- yeah, it's like military yeah. school yeah, in, in, a, in a bit of a way. They ho- homo you. So yeah, yeah I, they, they homo, they homo, no pause or whatever you're supposed to say. But uh, yeah, they did like you know what I mean. So I lost about no homo in that way, guys. By the way, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. Just homo means like taken to, like really yeah. r- like rough you up, get you get your manhood together. Where did yeah. that word come from, though? Uh, Before homo, we were saying real men shit. Anyway, well, homo sapien. Like was that maybe did it homo? Uh, Actually, I never bothered to find yeah. out. Or is it hum- they go, they go homogenous? Humble. You know, you know say they go or humble is it you. Homo you. They go I'll humble, humble you. you. Homo is true. They go humble you. I don't humble know. You. I have to find yeah. out, but it sounds like humble. I don't know where it came from. Yeah. So anyway, humble. long story short, one one time my mom showed up after the first year. I lost about sixty pounds. So I was big when she left me. I was skinny, and so she went through like a mom thing with my dad, and that's when she had the job at GIS because I had two younger brothers. And then they switched me to GIS, and then it took a different tra- oh. tra- trajectory. So you had the best of both worlds. I saw, you know what I mean? So I did da da ba, but I did da da na. You understand? <laughs> 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 yeah, for sure. That's, that's a dope experience. And, well, uh, and uh, you, um, how, how, how was your first experience? Like when you went, you, you were in the States for some time because you said your father was in school yeah yeah he, he had to go get his doctorate and masters yeah. um how was it like when you first came when you came back and you were enrolled in in a different school a different country even though you were born here and all that you know what i liked when i was in the states some of my fondest memories were Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> See, when I left Ghana to go to the States, some of my fondest memories, and shout out to Kwame Nkrumah, was the University of Ghana campus. Because mm. that's where we lived before we moved. And it was just, I was born in the village. I was born in Kumewu. Oh, so, wow. yeah, so to move from the village. That's to, powerful, actually. Yeah. yeah. To this architecture that is not even common to Ghana because the architecture is very like Japanese mm-hmm. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I used to have these visions when I was in the States, like of this place is like palatial and stuff. So I was kind of excited in that way. But Charlie, when I got to Africa, yeah, the, the man them wasn't hearing it. Mm. You know, there was a lot of um, discrimination because of the way I spoke. Because it's like, ah, this guy is slangy. He looks like us. Why do you think you are better? You know, a lot of mm-hmm. people felt I was better I felt like I was better because of the way I spoke. So it it was, I think it was bittersweet because people loved me because of the American thing and people hated me because of the American yeah, thing. Yeah. So it was really just me trying to find myself. And I also wanted to be like everybody else. But you wanted to fit in. I wanted to fit was, in. I just, yeah, you know, sticking out. Yeah, like a sore thumb. But then... That is where, funny enough, that's where I learned um, true greatness. Mm. Because that's where I realized I, I could run. You know, that, that's where I realized I was an athlete. And I defeated one of the, the biggest dude in my, you know, in my uh, age group. Okay. You know, shout I'm out running. to DC, man. I went to University Primary. There was this guy, I was in Greenhouse. Shout out to Greenhouse. And there was this guy called DC. And um, 
DC looked like a man. A man. He probably was. At the age of... And I think <laughs> right now, right now when I speak to him, he's like two years older than me, but he was in my class. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do so, you still see him? You still see the DC? He, he works at uh, Johans. Oh, wow. Yeah, I still mm -hmm. see him. You know, mm -hmm. the boys, we, sometimes we still meet in Legon. And it's interesting that when, when we were in Legon and we would go around like the lectures, where the lecturers hang out, we didn't really have, you are small boys, get out of here. Now we are in the lecturer's common rooms. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, as men, it's dope. But like I say, it just taught me greatness. You know, because when you're the only one running a race and you hear those people screaming and it's up to you to finish first and you do and you feel that sense of accomplishment that nobody could do this but you, it's... It, it it's a different level of self encouragement. Mm. So so quick, why didn't you pursue athletics? Like why did you pause or stop? I actually, I actually did pursue athletics. Um, I think I'm one of the fastest individuals in the history of GIS. Hey, 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 yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Big up. You know. <laughs> But, but I mean, on, on a national level. My dream, my dream was level. actually, yeah, my dream was um, to win a gold medal for Africa. That was for my Ghana, in the, Africa, in the Olympics. Because oh, right, right, right. I, I was the African champion as far as I was concerned, not the Ghana champion. Whatever I've done, the, you know what Kwame Krumah says, uh, the, the liberation of Africa is meaningless without the total liberation of, the liberation of Ghana, the freedom of Ghana is, Independence of Ghana is not, is meaningless without the total liberation North of Africa, the yeah. African continent. That that was what my mindset had always been. My father was Pan African, or is Pan African, so that was my dream. The hip hop and the music and stuff it came easy, mm -hmm. so we we would always do that. Yeah. But eventually, the places where I was supposed to go and run, I got a scholarship to go run in the states, and Bazi started messing me up. Embassy has messed my family up my whole life, the American Embassy. So eventually I realized, and then I went to run for um, the national team. No, really? Yeah, and then they realized that this Dada Ba is overing us all. And then somebody threatened me um, on some spiritual. And after that, I was like, Shelly, maybe this is not the way I should be going. Maybe I should just stop. Mm. So I, 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 I let them corner me into a place where I just gave up. Mm. And after that, I never gave like up. Like they threatened any... to do something to you? Yeah, medicine I, and stuff. Am I, am I Bala? Yeah. Bala. Yeah. Bala. Bala. Yeah. Why if you get Bala? Why you don't think that Bala do it for himself, make you run? Wait. Be, because, because, yeah, actually, <laughs> that's right. You see, that's another if thing. you have Agbala or Juju, Agbala means Juju or Black Magic. Yeah. If you have Agbala, why do you want to Destroy, destroy someone. someone. Why someone. don't you want to improve yourself? Tell you? <laughs> like, oh. is, is this not a? Is this not like a basic, fundamental, common sense question? Yeah. I got I got black magic. Let me help myself. Let me help myself. <laughs> right. Why should God, I destroy make... some? Oh yeah. And, and yeah, yeah. that is yeah, the, well, the Ghanaian mentality. Yeah, so like right. they always want to look to the next, mm -hmm. but, but not themselves. Matoma, right. can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is that a Ghanaian mentality or is that a human mentality? I, because well, the, way, the way we did take me do when I got up, people got, got no, be, me, got, right? but got be yeah. where we did. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Me, I am from here, so I will talk so about. We'll, we'll do yeah, Ghana. okay. You I know, understand. I'm so from familiar. Fred, you are dope. <laughs> <laughs> like, why, why don't you help yourself no, but to destroy somebody? No, let's else? go and destroy quick with tea. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you got scared and actually, punished, you know, yeah, you, you know, because what the guy told me was, he was like, ah. By you, do you have children? Do you have a wife? I was like, no. He said, Hans, you stay with your parents. Eh? You went to GIS. Okay. You know, when something happens to you that you don't understand, hey. don't question it because there are people who use this to feed their families. So I was like, what do you mean if something, Charlie? He said that there are things that happen. So if it happens, you understand. I went home, I thought about it for a while, and I realized. So if I'm going to lose my life over this, then maybe God's trying to tell me that that's not the direction I should go in. But but that guy was a liar because me, as far as I'm concerned, if someone wants to 
juju you, they won't tell you. Yeah. They won't even hint you. Motongo, mm. I'm 18 years old or 17, 18, 17, mm. 18. Oh, you're 18 then? Yeah, I just come out of G, GIS. You know, I, I, I think I just started like lower six in GIS. Mm. Mm. I'm like, Charlie, me, I don't know too much about these things. You understand? And I didn't even believe that any, yeah, yeah, you know, but my point was if certain things are happening to you and it's not going in the direction that you think it should be going in, then maybe you should put it on pause and Ooh. ask yourself certain questions. So I just, I, I left it. I think that was the most difficult thing I've had to do in my life because it's only recently I've been able to watch the Olympics because mm. whenever I see the 100 meters, like for a good 15 years, I walk away because like tears start welling up yeah. in my eyes. You yeah. could have been there. Oh yeah, because I was yeah. dope. Yeah. I mean, I was ready for Ben Johnson yeah. and all those people. Michael Johnson. I was just Johnson. about to say, you do have a similar facial yeah. makeup as Ben Johnson. You know Ben Johnson? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, huh? yeah. how sure? about you? Uh, you, you mean the, <laughs> Mario Jones, Ben Johnson. Yeah. So what happened to Ben Johnson? Ben Johnson? I don't know. Oh, you don't know Matt, Matt Johnson, steroids. You don't? Oh no, Matt, I, I Matt ah, steroids. Okay. Yeah, yeah, steroids. I was watching no, you the whole time. No, I see where you was going. <laughs> no, no, you was trying to set it up. <laughs> Quake, you act like Quake was on steroids. Ben Johnson was, was, is from like the 80s, right? 80s, early 1990s. I even thought you were about to say Ben Johnson from Nima. Ben Johnson from Nima. Jesus Christ of Tema <laughs> Community oh, Twelve. Boy. So, um, uh, um, uh, I mean, were you, were you were you were you also into into sports? I was. I just wasn't fast enough to do it, but I was big time we're running, running. Yeah, but I just my body wasn't going to go fast. So he would run, and then he would like go really fast, and then I would run, and I just have to go to the stance. <laughs> and then. So wait, <laughs> talking about yeah, it's like last That's last truth, last yeah, GIS talk before we move on. Yeah. So between you, right, me. My first time in GIS, mm -hmm. I was in Accra Academy, okay. and you guys had what, a show. What year? What year was this? So well, the yo, start with all the years. No, no, yeah. listen, we don't gotta do all that. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But, but I'm, I'm saying it's a new generation, so we we ninety. Keep it. It was it was, a, it was in the year of the vibe. It was yeah. a vibe. Yeah. Ninety eight. <laughs> okay. Were you were you were you were you, were you guys I, still there? I I w I was I was teaching. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So 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 ninety eight in, 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 in GIS in GIS. So 98, 99, um, 99, I came to GIS, you know, you guys were having a show. There was a dark room and, you know, everything. Right. Room, room, room 15. Yeah. And, and, and you know, one thing that stood out, you know, through and through, like every student in GIS were the sneakers. Yeah. yeah. And I want to ask, between you two, who had the flyest sneakers? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna keep it all the way hundred. I think I was one of the, I was the first generation of. <laughs> yeah, I was the first generation of T, uh, TS boys. Oh, oh wow, TS, yeah. yeah. you know, you know. Yeah, can't come on to it. Can't come on to it. Yeah, yeah. I think so. It was, it was, that but was, but these people, they used to get their own from America. Yeah. We was yeah. on. Yeah. I was, I was, because of circumstances. Yeah, I had a little bit of product. Yeah, mm. we had, we had, we had a little product. Yeah. So were you doing the East Base? You go through East Base, my mag magazine, and just. Oh, I see what he's doing. Hey, Charlie. The sneak again. You got to take you all the way back, man. Yeah. East Bay, you got to. Yeah. I'm afraid you're the guy's Bay, right? Of course, hey, man. Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Dreams. Mm. Woo. Oh, my God. So were you guys like mates? No, he was uh, uh, two years ahead of me. He was one two. Year, one year. He was one? Yeah, I was one year. I was one year ahead of him. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Because of the. Energy, you, you know, high school, mm -hmm. everybody vibes with who kind of yeah. is vibing and shit. Yeah. So we yeah. kind of there was no real like senior. So, yeah, it wasn't except that senior seniors. Yeah, because I would go to I'd go to the hood, you know, to go to TS Teddy and them boys. TS for those yeah. who don't know, Tesano. Hey, Tama Station. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, who be that? I'll be right now. Who be that? I'll be. And the count of Tesla's Hey. That's my second home. That's my second home. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. They, they go talk with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we see. Yeah, so usually I'd, I'd have the kicks that weren't common, you know, like the yeah. British Knights and stuff like mm. that. Because when the, when, the, when the sneakers come, it's not like we ordered 20. 
Air Force Maxes. It's yeah. whatever comes. Yeah, yeah that's Air what Force you get. Fa- yeah. Fair selection. The I bill. Mean. The bill. Yeah, the bill, man. The <laughs> bill. Yeah. And back then it was it was a bit like I wouldn't even compare my sneaker game because I always thought that this was second hand. So yeah, Charlie, I know this Siam stuff. But then the Darabees would borrow my shadow. Yeah. So I used to think, Charlie, so I wouldn't baby I did. Yeah, where, where it came from. You know where it came, came from. from. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, it was a it was a beautiful experience. Dope, in dope. all, man. Dope. I hear so, still big in GIS. What? Like the sneaker, sneaker culture. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. But yeah. I think it, it, it's a secondary school thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, it was big for us too. It's not like yeah. it was any yeah, different yeah, in yeah. the other schools. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, mm. from from three in Accra Academy, I never paid school fees once. I used my school fees for sneakers. Then Joe Bobby don't chop your head. Yeah, yeah. I like, like first time school fees, that's second time school fees. That's a dope hustle, right there. What you just fees, said. That's I used dope. because at that time, from three, my mom had died. Oh shit. Yeah, oh, my and, and my uncle was paying my school fees. God bless the dead. So I was using. My fees to just buy sneakers, you know. And um, so, how did you guys form Talking Drums? Um, like I said, we we were doing talent shows, and um, we kind of congregated together because of uh, like he was like the super athletic dude, you know, Jay Gatti. Yeah. So, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it 100. Kweku and Jay Gatti were like kind of like the high school super, like the superhuman dudes. Like they was like the dudes like run fast and like you know what I mean. And then they also did music, and this is where I kind of like found my little lane because I wasn't fast. And then you know what I mean. And so because of messing with Jay Gatte, talent show bops like when a rap ah uh, impress a little high school recognize. Girls. Yeah, it it, it, it was recognize. nothing more than than yeah. trying to find like yo I can do this because when I moved to when I moved from Philadelphia, like in Philly, it was it was not cool to be smart, and I came to Ghana. And then it was not cool to be dumb. Yeah. So I went yeah. through like a, a weird, a weird uh, culture shock in terms of like. And so and so when I met these brothers, they like they were like smart, athletic, and everything. And so I finally was like, okay, that's the energy. And I, I got into the music because it it allowed me to you know what I mean to get with them. And so, long story short, it was Chief in the tribe. He already had his thing going on with Quaku and them. And I just came in like, yo. We got enough. We got another nigga from Philly, nigga. He's here. Like, you throw him in there, and then I kind of just fell in there, and it it just linked, and then and everything started from there. Yeah, but talking drums, like as far as I'm uh, I'm concerned, or I know, um, talking drums was primarily you and we, 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 like two of you. So when did Jay fall out? It wasn't a fallout. Jay Jay went back to America, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. In school. Yeah. And so yeah. okay, so it was high school shit. Um, talent show shit. So it was never professional. Professional. Okay. Yeah. It was like it was like, yo, look what we doing. Yeah. yeah and it was hype. Yeah. And it was hype. And then people started growing up. Like, yo, it's time to go to college. And Jay Garte always came from the dope. You know what I mean? Big up to Jay. Big up to Mama Jay. Big up to Papa Jay. Joe Garte and all them. Harvard. They came history. from Harvard and all that. You know what I mean? And so that he went into that. Like he was like, yo, I gotta. Go. It's time to go to school. And then me right. and Quaker were sitting there like, yo. <laughs> we kind of we already in school. Yeah, we kind of we kind of like need to do something. So yeah. let's let's do like and then it went from talent show to yo people kind of like this shit. Can let's just try it and keep going, keep going, keep going. And the and that's how Talking Drums came together because Panji found us at a talent show. That's how Talking Drums started. Oh wow! Yeah. So so Panji too went to jazz, right? Yeah, he did. And so his, Panji, because, because of his mother teaching yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. The same thing. Yeah, same. wow. So yeah. Panji maybe came to a show at GIS, saw you guys rap. Not no, GIS. No. It was National at uh, National Theater. Theater. So wow. this is when, by this time this? from talent shows. What you say something? What event was this? At the, I think it was like ah, this recognized. Is Kwame Swift. Kwame oh. Swift, Bongo and them. Yeah, uh, Bongo Solomon. And Solomon. It Solomon was Parker. It was recognized. A bit, it was, recognized was big. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. it was like yeah. a big type of joint. Yeah. And so at this point, hit, believe it or not, there was some sort of hip hop thing forming yeah, in yeah, Ghana. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was cruise, but it was a lot of dancing, break. You know what I mean? That yeah. type of shit. And so, um, but Harold left, and it was me and Quaker. We were like, "Yo, we kind of dope. People kind of like what we're doing. Mm. Let's see if we can. Let's see if this. You know what I mean? Take this show on the let's road. Let's see if we can just. You know what I mean? And so we just got together with our rhymes. Same shit we was doing on talent show, but 
just trying to be cool, and then went into this show. And long story short, I'm going to keep it real. I think we, we destroyed it and went crazy, but we lost it because, you know what I mean, Kwame and them niggas is, you know what I mean, same shit is going on. We are right. Shout out to Kwame, Kwame Swift. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the name of their group? Taboo. Stalking. Taboo. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Taboo. Yeah. It was Taboo. Taboo. Yeah. It was Eddie yeah. Blay and them. Who, who? That was uh, t- t- uh, NFL. Yeah, NFL. NFL. Mm. So it was, it was it was actually, it was hip hop going on. I must have been on. at that show. Mm. For yeah. sure. It was yeah. dope though, but but no, nah, it was dope, and it was it was a lot of dope groups. We didn't win the competition, yeah. but what happened was Pangy Anoff came to the show and was like, "Whatever these two weirdos on the stage," because the crowd went crazy, but we lost. So yeah. it was a weird experience for us. No, um, but, but we didn't just lose; we were fourth. Yeah, you but know, the there crowd, was some kind yeah. of controversy that came from yeah. that show. Thing. Yeah. I remember I was there. Yeah. I'll be with you guys. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, we were loud. I don't know. I think, from my perspective, just vague memory. I remember, yeah. people were like cheering for them the most. Yes. And yeah. then when the results were announced, it was like Surprise. nothing reflecting yeah. of what was happening. Right. So it, it even became a bit chaotic. I didn't remember this thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It was. So, it was a bit of that. Vibe. But 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 anyway. But that was indicative of what's to come for the industry. But that's cool. Yeah. But it was beautiful enough that Panji noticed the same thing you're talking about. All that mattered was the person who mattered saw what everybody else doesn't matter if he won or not. So Panji saw us and and grabbed us on some Puff Daddy Chris. I don't know how to describe. He, he actually grabbed us. We didn't know what we were doing, and it was Panji who was like talking drums. We were thinking about that, you know what I mean? And I then and then we became professionals because. Through Panji. Yeah, he, wow. he grabbed us and, and Shout like, out to Panji, man. Big, Panji. big up to Panji. Yeah. But, but to, to, to buttress what he's saying. What the yeah, fuck buttress. does that mean again? Buttress? Yeah, mm-hmm. buttress, dog. This nigga <laughs> always. It, nah, he always be to using big ass words. To support what you say. Listen, I'm a rapper, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he be using big ass words. To firm it up. Firm it up. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. These guys, huh? Yeah. My bad. I'm not going to be canceled today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I think what was most significant about that was that um, we had done so much and we had been so through so much and there was so much family stress that that show in particular, the outcome, he was already going through stress with his mother. Like you, you're yeah, doing, I was coming to that. Yeah, yeah. you're doing all levels. Why are you rapping? Well, this rap, rap, rap. So, that okay, just like the running, that was an indication for us that maybe this isn't the thing for us. Yeah. Mm. Maybe we should give it up. So he was going home like, Quago, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't, the, the, it's too much. And on my side, I'm like, I got to go all the way to Lego on Main Gates and Jeez. walk yeah. to Aido Flats ah, at like midnight. Lego. Jesus Christ. You know, I'm walking like maybe 20 minutes in, in the dark, young boy, 13, 14 years old. So it got to a point. I was, when I was leaving, literally, I was like, "Okay, today's the last day we're gonna do this," and I heard somebody call my name, and and I turned around. And it looked like a light skinned R. Kelly, because <laughs> yeah, <'cause, laughs> I swear. <laughs> I don't, I don't know Life if that's a problem. Uh, in, in today's current climate, oh, listen, the, 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 the thoughts of this, the thoughts of the people on this no. show do not reflect the thoughts oh, of the shit. people producing yeah, the show. We, we get what you're saying. You know the horrible thing when I told this, these stories in the past, it was all good until this happened, till he happened to himself, R. Kelly. But um, the reason I say R. Kelly is because this guy I've never seen, he looked like Don Quixote. You know, <laughs> yeah, he had the low haircut. He was wearing a stussy top. It was like a, it was like a rugby, uh, baseball top sort of thing. Mm, it was mm, kinty. Mm, mm. It was kinty, but it was foreign. Yeah, you understand from London. And then he was wearing dark jeans and black Timberlands. I I hadn't seen black Timberlands before. Oh shit! And he had his hands behind his back, and he was like, "Well, hey man, I thought you guys were great. You, I felt you people should have won." I was like, y'all preaching to the choir. This guy is being long. It so was, long it, and short. It, it, it was like that, though. Yeah. Because he, it was like we were so upset it's like, about but, the loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, yeah, that he, shit was what, big. What, that when he yeah. was talking to us, we were like. <sighs> right. Yeah, like, Forget what? all that. What? Like, yeah. like, did you see what it? And not knowing that, 
Yeah. He was the plug. It was For the real. shit that yeah. was going to so change everything. Yeah. yeah. So eventually he tells me, by then a big with left. So he tells me, okay, we're shooting, we're shooting this movie and we're doing, it's called Back Home Again, Zuko. Mm. Mm. Zuko was one of the guys. Shout out to Zuko. Shout out to Nanay yeah, Sihini. That's, yeah. that's his uh, nephew. So he was like, come through. We're, sh- we're, we're recording the soundtrack and we need rappers. And there weren't real rappers in Ghana really at that time. Back then, yeah. Yeah. So BB the virus was the guy that mm, was doing Shout out to BB. Shout, shout out, out to BB. Big up, BB. And Big so up. he, up. he was up. like, yeah, come, come and shoot. I mean, come and record and let's see what happens. And I thought, shit. Sure. I mean, I'm already thinking about giving up. What's this guy talking about? He takes this big wad of money that I've never seen money like that before at that age. He puts it in my hand and he goes, take this, call your friend, go and pick him up from North Kaneshi and bring him to, um, at that time, it was Ghana Films. Bring him to Ghana Films and then let's see. And if you decide not to come to, you have some spending money. I was like, whoa, this guy flexed me. You have spent, all this money is spending money. Then maybe I need to find out what's behind this money. Mm. And also the, the way I was raised, my, um, my, my conscience wouldn't have allowed me to take that money and not go. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next morning I walked to a communication center because we didn't have phones. House oh phones. yeah, we know about that. Yeah. yeah. I walked to a communication center. I'm not that old. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm right here with the new motherfuckers. What's happening? (laughs) (laughs) I called him up. He was like, wait, wait, I I can't. I can't. I was like, well, let me speak to your mother and see. I spoke to her. I told her exactly what it was. And she was like, let's go. We got there. His his mom? His mother. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we got there. Because sometimes he'll come and talk to my parents. Sometimes I talk to his parents. Mm. You know. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. It's the only way, it's the only way it works. Because I mean, they're not going to uh, listen to us. You got to uh, understand. You got you to gotta have, you got to be like, yo, you know you know what it was. When you yeah. when you were young, you'd be like, yo, yeah. can you talk to moms? Yeah. yeah. So, Please. So wait, so your mom and your dad supported you with your rap thing, right? They supported me not getting in trouble. And the rap thing was... It's like get your grades together, you straight, yeah. and then was it was it was it the same for for you? No, 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 no. My parents were like Charlie, go to school. Mm. This rap, 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 rap thing it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Where are you taking it? And I understood because they weren't from, they're not hybrids. So I understood that from their generation, the artists never really made any money they Mm. died poor Mm. so they wanted the best for their child of course but at the same time i'm not a dummy i study the climate i'm seeing what is happening in the zeitgeist at the time you know so if if i can see that there's money here i have this vision and i'm seeing what's going on and you guys can't see it because you don't follow the trends you don't Mm. follow the popular culture then I got to keep doing what I'm doing until you ride it out till the wheels fall off, like that bicycle you were talking about earlier. So I was like, Charlie, I saved up my lunch money, and that's what I use to get around to go to shows and stuff. I hop in a trotra right now. And, but, you know. but wait, could, did, your, did your parents support you when you were on track, when you were running? No. No, no, no. Even for GIS? Yeah. You said your, your mom was, was, was a teacher at GIS. Yeah, but my parents didn't, and I understand that part too. Because my parents, there was no, there was no um, example of somebody who had been successful doing these things in Ghana. And you know, we don't celebrate diversity. Of course. You know, my, I think African parents who, have, who had had edu- an education, especially outside of the country, didn't want to fall into the, the stereotype of we, yeah, as Africans, all we can do is run, jump, have sex, course, yeah. and you know, we're not we can enter- also we're not entertainers for the world. We're not just entertainers; we can also think. It was also, I mean, I don't know if you guys would agree, but it was sort of like a class thing. It was whereas, a class like, thing. if you're educated, you want your kids to come out professionals, not yeah. right. rap pie. Let, let, let's not even say right. sort of. <laughs> we're dealing with we're dealing with Ghana. Ghana, we're, 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 we're getting over classism. We deal with yeah. classism. Let's, let's yeah. not even 
sugarcoat yeah. the shit. It's classism. Mm. It was like well, if your yeah, kid is a rapper, they considered yeah. you a bum. Yeah, yeah. 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 everybody, failure. everybody's black in Ghana, so we ain't got a racism. Mm. But Even I, I football, sports, 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 yeah, yeah, football yeah, sports, wasn't sports. respected until they started yeah, making, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 sports. Yeah. But you see, that's that crazy. But the, now, but now, every parent is right. enrolling their kids right. in football classes. Exactly. But, but but why though? Hear me out. This is this is what I'm saying, and, and this is why I want to try and forgive some of our parents and our grandparents. Absolutely. Of course, they didn't. They didn't know like, no better. Anybody, anybody only moves to the uh, to the ability that their brain goes to. In other words, if your brain can see here, you only gonna go that far. So, in other words, for some of the like, you're not gonna know footballers gonna make money. If you knew you, it was a hundred million dollars, you you'd be training him as soon as he learned how to walk, the same way they do. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, as we can start to zoom out, we're seeing that a lot of our a lot of the African parent stigma, I think, comes from just perspective doing yeah doing what they yeah. thought went. In, in, in the best interest of the tribe and in, in, in terms yeah. of our growing. Yeah, yeah. And now we're learning that it's, it's bigger than that. So. My father's an, an environmental economist, right? So, like, to buttress the point, when we were growing up in but, the uh, 80s in, in, in New York, we, we were born between the cusp of technology and a technology. I mean, we were just coming into technology, Microsoft, Apple. And I, I've, I've been saying, if my father had bought like, or my mother had bought like a $1 share in Microsoft in like 1983, like by now, we would be millionaires. Of course. But they didn't know. They didn't know any better. Yeah. You know? And it, it's interesting that at the end of the day, that thing that, like as, as they say, like my parents used to tell me, you can't make money from rap or athletics, it's just education, you know. And how many years later, this is what is sustaining certain economies, mm -hmm. you know. This is what is bringing, um, which is wild, when you, you know, think about it. this is what is bringing tourism, yeah, to certain African yeah. countries. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, a strong oxymoron in that sense, yeah. you know. I mean. I, I like where Beku was going with this because he was kind of saying we have to forgive our parents because they just didn't... It's not even they didn't know. It was true what they were saying. The yeah. era was not producing yeah. no multimillionaire yeah. right. athletes and right. it had to take a while for it to build up to that point where mm -hmm. now we all see what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you give them some grace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, we got... We got, yeah. we got we had, we, because we're going to put it like this. We're going to do the same thing with our children. And they're gonna get to a point and they're gonna be like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, let me Because let me because be. right now we are not gonna know what is going to be available in their space given how evolution is gonna work. So yeah. all we can do is to hopefully the best shit we can do. Yeah. I think I you know what I mean? And they're yeah. still gonna create the same shit. We're gonna be bucking and you know what I mean? Yeah. We are gonna to come to family and all that, right? Yeah. But do you guys remember your fair show? I, I your do. first I, proper show. I remember the first one that people went crazy off. It changed my life. I do. Yeah. I think I remember. I think I, I remember the first GIS show. That's what I mean. The first GIS. Yeah. yeah. The first the one, one the when one we did a talent show, show where people started going ah, and I was like, holy yeah. shit, nigga, this is it. I remember. Yeah. That. It was. I remember. Do you really wanna party? party. We the had that MC Power Hammer Africa, dude. Right? Right? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, wow. Holy shit. Yeah, it was it was wild because for me, that was the first time I had ever dressed up like the people who were on TV. Mm. You know, you had the baggy like I don't know if you remember the boys. Of course. Yeah, yeah so yeah. You, you know, we had pants sagging. Pants yeah. sagging, you know, the whole nine. You know, and that, that was, was the first time going on stage that you had dressed like that? Yeah. That was the first time cuz oh, we, wow. we show were, about yeah, it. we were dressing like stars. You know, what I'm saying? Attempt, attempted, like to, attempted to be the people we saw on right. TV. On TV, okay. mind you, first time yeah, yeah. at that time to even get a, to even get an instrumental, to rap on it was a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> you had to find a B side. I think the yeah. first instrumental we rapped on was um, DJ Quick. It was crazy, but but the Tonight. Joint, I just said, Tonight. do you really? You remember that song? Yeah. Pod. That's the instrumental we had. Like yeah. that's we used that because that's the instrumental we had yeah. but my nigga 
Niggas we would use dance. I Got the These Power. These dancers. They, 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 they was dan- Did you guys ever do the beating on the table thing? That, right. that, that, was, that was in class. Yo, you know what? We, we, can't, we can't leave Bertram out of this. There was a guy called Symbol. Um, his father... No, his father, a, big was, up, big up, Bertram, man. Big, big up, up, Bertram big up Hall, symbol. Yeah. symbol. His father was a part. He had a band called Zoom Band. Mm. Yeah, and he, so this guy went to GIS, but his father was a band member. But my parents told me you can't make any money from music. But this is the, one of the most expensive schools in, in in the country, and this guy's a musician, and his son What's is there? playing the drums for us. So talking drums actually began with. The drummer, and then us, okay. and then it later was a drummer Pangy, and two rappers. Yeah, yeah, and two okay. rappers, and then later Panji jumped in, and that was the biggest blessing ever because that was the first time somebody actually made music, like an instrumental, mm. you know, off an MPC sixty. I think we were the only ones with, with an MPC sixty in Ghana at that time. Wow. Yeah. So certain conversations that we have, it's like if if you haven't worked with certain machines from the beginning of your career, we can't really have a proper conversation because like I disagree, my nigga. So you can't do that. Yeah, no, you can't though. You nah, can't. Man. When you're talking about the He's original, on that old school shit, I'm on this new school shit. When you're talking about the original <laughs> no, no, that is the truth. I'm, I'm on t- this new school. I'm like, I'm here right now. I'm not I'm not on that. I'm feel like, yo, let's get it popping right now. What the fuck? I don't care. We What's up? A- What's the new shit? Cause it's it's new shit. It's AI now, nigga. I'm so, not going back to the AI. Like we gonna talk about wait, that in the history book. So because we huh? got the new shit, that means we shouldn't talk about the old shit. No, we're I said, here. Let's talk about it. Our let's value, talk. our value is in the fact that we created some old shit that has become some new shit. So let's use that and let's keep going forward. That's my shit. I'm not, I'm just not. I'm not a big I w- fan. I, w- I would of the like. Past. But let me ask no, you guys. But, but that's the problem. No, 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 no. Yeah, let I'm me not. ask you guys. You know, but <laughs> I'm not. I'm hold not on, a big on, fan of the past. Hold on, hold on. I want to ask you guys this: <coughs> How much thought yeah. went into going with the name Talking Drums? For me, everything. He didn't want that name because mm. it wasn't a cool name. Don't be snitching out here. You didn't want the name. My name was Ochami. Why did you want the name? You want to talk about it? It wasn't cool. No, 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 no. Because we was we was figuring out. At the time, you got to understand, we were matching ourselves to, we didn't have African identity, so I didn't know how important it was. So okay. I'm, lo- I'm looking at America and going, you want to do something? Yeah, like, foo like, nigga. Yeah. Talking drunk. Right. I'm like, what you want to call that? yourself talking drunk? Oh, digital they, planet. You know what I mean? But the thing is. My ignorance was my learning process. I was ignorant. Which is dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But talking yeah, yeah. drums. But I was, but I was, I was on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I talking was drums was like a it, cross. Yeah, it was Panji and this nigga who was like. Talking. They used to call us the African niggas. They they'd laugh at who, us. Who used to call us? That? Come on, dude. You want me to put it out here? <laughs> no. Who? Who used to call us? That? I don't remember that. Yeah, man. Let's put them out there, dude. <laughs> because we all Africans here. Which which niggas call us the African niggas? Because everybody wanted. We gonna do this on blast. Everybody not, wanted to be anything. American. Everybody. Yeah. You see, the the thing is, the oxymoron comes in whereby, like. Everybody wants to be American, right? It's a cool thing to do back then. But but we're African. Just like England, like right? everyone yeah. in the world has until they found their own self. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody did that. I and mean, that was so, when we was at that. So point. let me let, let me break it down, the names and stuff. Taboo, NFL stood for niggas for life. Yeah. Initially. Mm-hmm. And then when Big up Eddie Blay, by Big the up way. Eddie Blay and all the boys. And then when our thing started. They went to native. They funk went lords. to native um, funk lords. Native funk lords. Did they really do that? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. changed their shit from funk. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yo, Eddie. No, so he talked about that. Are you something serious? for life? Yo, niggas for life. Yeah, the niggas first one was life. niggas yeah. for life. Okay, okay. Then they yeah. went to native niggas funk lords. Yeah. 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 Same group. Same group. Same group. I mean, some of them, some of them left, but the core became. Cause, I'll let you, cause Eddie, but we're going to talk, talk about this later. NFL was huge, though. Very, very big. Like, yeah. Side Lo- Lover was a part of NFL. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 so yeah. that's why a lot of people that you wouldn't think were a part of it were a part of it. Big up yeah. Side yeah. Lover. Yeah. Big up yeah. Side Lover. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Shout out to Jake. So the reason why I was asking about the name was, um, I, I meant everything I said before you guys got on set. I'm not even bullshitting. But at that young age, 
for me, the name Talking Drums really connected to, I don't know why, yeah. but I was like, oh shit, like Talking Drums, but they're really rapping. They're not. Yeah, yeah. It's the first, I mean, if you think about it, when we're young, we were all doing this rap thing on campus. In school, yeah. you'd be rapping it, but this is the first time we see people like us on mm. TV doing what you see like Tribe Called Quest doing or yeah, EPMD right. or KRS One, whoever you want to bring up. Right. So it was like such a, a sense of pride, but the idea that it was called Talking Drums, because Talking Drums is a thing. I don't yeah. know, for you young people who don't know, it's a yeah. tradition for us. You know, mm. you beat the drums, you used to announce stuff in the village. That's how, we, that's that's how, how we they communicate. communicated. That's how we communicate. And it was, it was so it hip-hop. Was the first iPhone. Yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> like it's like, that. true, true. Yeah. So it's, it it's interesting hearing about the genesis of the name now, but how, you know, yeah. you guys came up with that name and stuff. Yeah. It, was, it cool. was symbolism. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, you, you have like two solid videos online. Is it two? Man. One? No, we, 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 uh, it's I, only Aden I can no, find. No, 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 we got Aden and we got, of course, the the public enemy. So we got footage online and then the Aden yeah. video. A lot of things. We got we performance online. Just because yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so for the Aden video, you were in Batakari? Yes. That and was that was the uniform. Yeah, yeah. But but Kari. And 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 Kukuti, like you talking like since the beginning of this podcast, you've been mentioning in chroma, in chroma, in chroma, in chroma. Yeah. Um has it always been a thing being like a Pan African? Like has it always been a thing or or like like when when did this thing when did this encromised you know mm. you know mid geology start i think um it had always been there because my father was like an encromised i mean th- my parents grew up like my Nkrumah was an old he was older than them at that time right so my mother was like a young pioneer you know that's the Nkrumah went to like secondary schools he had like clubs mm, that were yeah. in Krumai's clubs yeah. right so my mother would tell these stories and I, I was born in revolution i was born around like you know after i was born there was a 79 cool mm. or rawlings yeah, yeah, yeah so there was always that conversation that was going around and then moving to america they were just phasing out racism so mm. you uh, they, they're still phasing it out because it yeah. ain't over yeah, yeah. can you imagine <laughs> can you imagine yeah yeah, yeah. how many years later but, um, like, so you would see, like, uh, Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. They'd show black people getting hosed down by cannons and the civil mm. rights movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that even made me more like, ah, how? You know, and my father would always tell me, Charlie, I named you an African name. And I didn't give you any other name because no white man will call his son or no foreigner will call his son Kweku. Yeah, because I went up to him one day and I was like, I, I told him, "Yo, they they messing up my name out here. They fucking up my game. I want to change my name. I want you to call me Michael." <laughs> <laughs> no, I did that. Yo, 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 yo. I did that too. You I did that? My, no. I, I you like, don't yo, call have me an English John. Name. I call me John. I asked my parents to call me Why John. John. And then they started calling me John. I started crying. Because they try to call me John. I was like, no way, you ask them to call you John. Yeah, yeah, call you John. I, 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 would, I, would, I would go to school and they would have to say, a big, like, they would have to say a baku. And then the whole class would go, ah, Quaker Oats. So I came home like, no, fuck this shit, nigga. I got three Johns. Give me a John. <laughs> and they started calling me John. And I was like, fuck y'all niggas. <laughs> call me a <I'll> baku. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you oh have an organ in your name as well? Nana Abiuku Mensara Iberu. Oh, wow. So that means you are from the central region? I, my grandfather was a Mancrado of Cape Coast. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Mm. I'm a Cape Coast. Nana Abiuku. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Mami Water's son. Wow. Kweku Anansi. Mm. Wow. I the and, font. <laughs> and you are Kweku? HRH Kweku Asamwa Tutu. Kweku Asamwa Tutu. Yes. Sir. So, like, you know what? You know what, right? Yeah. How I'm seeing this, right? Like, the universe, right, brought two people 
together who are in quote authentic. Yeah. Authentic in the sense like they are not like us where you're Fred and I'm Percy. Mm-hmm. Because I have an English name. My mom yeah. named me after yeah. some hair. Percy Sledge. Yeah. So I was named ex- as some German Kwasia. But really? yeah. Oh, but <laughs> you know, these guys, right? <laughs> but these guys, right? They are government names. All local. To the bone. Like Ghanaian. And they formed a group, Talking Drums. Yeah. Talking Drums in Ghana. Like, if you are in tune with like the Ghanaian culture, Talking Drums... You should know. It's so central to who we are. It's a f- and, fixed part of what, what we do. And they go ahead to make tunes like Adeng. Yeah. But you know yeah. even what's crazier is well, w- w- the line that you're going yeah. is that for all intents and purposes, they're both royalty. Yeah. If you want to identify an individual in this country as their essence, like yeah. truly I can go to your house and know that you are of the soil. Royal is one of the most potent ways to determine a person's lineage. Yeah. Like you can validate that this is guy, this guy is Ghanaian through and through and through, or they are Ashanti or they are Fanti or whatever you want to. Yeah, yeah. But you know, so it's crazy. Like it's like how I'm seeing this is it, it's like it was destined. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was yeah. destined. Do you remember your first like do you, do you remember the Aden shoot? Like, do you remember that day? Because when was it shot? In the 90s. Yeah. It was like ju- ju- 1993. Uh, no, no, no. But this is the way they, they keep doing this 90s. 90s. <laughs> Why? Well, you, we're time travelers. Because I want the Gen Z's to know. <laughs> <laughs> we're time travelers, man. Yeah. That's wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and then it was shot in 93? Yeah. 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 Bro. That's wow. what I'm Big up Abraham. Big up, big up, big up, big up, big up, Abraham. Oh, am. Abraham, he was 18 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow! So if first, you, first, you know first if, rap if, if music Brown video is going to be no, no. On, on this I'm gonna podcast. say this though. Okay. I yeah, will yeah. say this: first rap music video that this one, our country called Ghana, of course, produced. Bro, I don't care what it is, one. but that one we totally. can claim. It, I'm not the first. We're not the first rappers. You know none of that. But but we had one. We had one channel. So that means that when we shot that video, that one one channel, everybody. Everybody saw us. Everybody. And that's that was the difference. Yeah. 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 Every it was one channel. So they, when they played it, mm-hmm. everybody it was huge. They, they would actually tell you the time it was gonna come on so you can tell everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was spread the vibe. Yeah. 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 It, it, so, so so wait, when when you when your parents saw the video on TV, what did they say? Like how was the reaction 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 like? Yeah. My mom was cool, but my father was like, okay, you can do this for about three more weeks because it looks like... It's <laughs> that, doing part, <laughs> that part. That <laughs> part. Really was he a soldier? Nah, he's, Military a, he, he's a professor. He don't bro, care about... Like, bro. in his mind, he's like, bro, you just... He, in his mind, he's like, you having fun. Like, he's like, yeah, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. going to stop... When, when you yeah. stop having fun. But it was on TV. He's like, now you having fun on TV. He's like, man, <laughs> when you're done... <laughs> Wow. But Tomo, you were asking uh, Kwekuti a question. What? You, I think I want you to go back to you were talking. You started. You set it up with Batakari. Oh, the Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, funny enough, my first rhyme that I ever wrote was called Kwame Nkrumah. Oh wow! Yeah. Crick, crick, crick. And the first time I ever battled somebody in a club, I was like twelve years old. My my brother, my brothers was like six, five, six years older than me. He snuck me into the club, Matador. I know Matador. Yeah. Matador, yeah. yeah. And Sai Lover was there. I, oh, okay. I didn't know the first time in the club, he was like the area champion. And I'm like, I'm a young boy. You know, I barely got through the door. And my brother and things are like, Charlie, quick, you can't rap, you can't rap, go, go, go. So they forced the mic in my hand. So Sai went, he did his freestyle thing. And back then, I, I didn't know what freestyle was. And I busted my Kwame Krumah rap. And everybody started screaming, but he won. And he won because he was the area champion, mm. you know? So coming back to Kwame Krumah, the first thing I ever penned to paper was Kwame Krumah based, mm. you know? So I had wanted to tell you, um, going back to the class system, which is funny because hip hop was an avenue for the ghetto to speak. 
right. to express itself. Yes. Right? And in Ghana, so I guess that's why in Ghana they felt like if you were rapping, you were a ghetto boy. But the thing is, the people who were rapping in Ghana were the privileged. Of course. Because if you didn't, if you weren't of privilege, you wouldn't get like the Yo MTV raps. You yeah, had to have yeah, a yeah. brother. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Fat Five that's Freddy a, that's and all that's of that. That's a yeah. strong point he's yeah. making. Yeah, you know. Solid they, point. To even like, know all about. facts. You get me? So everybody who was rapping was like, we, we were in school. We weren't dealing drugs. We were, this was our outlet as youth who aren't heard because as as a child, our parents look at us like children. But Still we, do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but that, that was a weird statement. As a child, they look at us like, <coughs> but anyway, I'm going to let you continue. Our parents but... looked at us like children. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and it, it, it's, it, it's a thing, it, it's a part of our, the fabric of our society. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we too, we felt like we had an opinion on certain things. Yeah. And that was our way of expressing our flyness or dissatisfaction with the fact that America felt like maybe we are some bush boys in some corner somewhere. Mm. So whatever stereotypes that we faced when we were living in the States, these are the things we spoke about. Mm -hmm. I think that was the... the I think that precipitated, that was the first precipitation of that thing that is now the year of return. Mm -hmm. The first song that we ever did was called Aquaba. Yeah. You know, and Aquaba was Aquaba, us Aquaba, brother, man. welcoming the world to the new sound. Mm. This new African hybrid sound that we were proud of because we were trying to tell everybody that, yo, we're not different from you. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just express ourselves slightly different, but we're really distant relatives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's dope. Um, so I'm, I, I'm, I feed off stuff on the podcast, like to just try to get a little deeper into your stories. Mm. I'm observing a, a very, like the synergy between you and Abeku is obvious. Like, you guys act like brothers. I, I was going to ask yeah. whether they fought. They bicker they, like brothers. Like, have you guys How much of falling out? Yeah. <laughs> How much of that energy happened in the studio, in your work process and all that? That thing has happened from school to the studio to America to <laughs> uh, uh, the visa applications to deportation to... We're brothers. And so, uh, I think that the more we struggle, the more it brings us. We're, we're brothers. Yeah, we yeah. fight. Yeah, we fight. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's, he, 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 he's my greatest challenger in the most positive way I could think of. He's always been a better rapper than me, by the way. So. He's a liar. He's a liar. That one, dear. So this type of yeah. thing. He so. kept me rapping because I felt like this guy. I used to say, if there's any artist as dope as Beku, then that guy's dope. Mm. You, see, you, see, you see the artist. reverse psychology, y'all are going. Yeah, but let that chicks come around. You think he's saying that to them? No, he's not. He's I mean, like, I cool that regard, you, you just say that when you the gotta chick plant your tree, bro. I, I, you, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta nah, put your stamp down and be like, I'm the best when but, it comes to the ladies. But the funny yeah, thing yeah, is, yeah. even when it comes to the ladies, he says the same thing. Quaco is a dope rapper, and I'll be like, No, I'm not the dope rapper. This guy's mm. the dope rapper. But plus, also because we come out of an era where. And shout out to Jay-Z for being able to do what he's done. Because when we were coming up, it was the people with the lion voices. Mm. The, the Biggie, the Big Daddy Kane, yeah. the, the Tupac. You had to have like a masculine yeah. voice. to The, the Busta Rhymes. Yeah. yeah, I was soft-spoken. This is artificial intelligence, what my voice is doing right now. From accident. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't be you see, you see, I don't yeah. be, I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> yeah. That shit means I don't understand what he's talking about. I always about. wanted a deep voice. Always. Okay, so you we was talking about the brother shit. We argue a lot, we brothers absolutely, uh technically, musically, like and this is just an opinion. He's a better rapper, which makes it a better thing for me as a challenge to that's Step what that, game, that uh, is what okay, gave okay. me the thing like, yo, I got this man is naturally crazy. Just like athletics. He's, he, there are people like that. It just is what it is. And he's always been that dude. And so I, uh, he has given me that shit that I chase. Like, yo, I got to be, be like this because niggas is naturally that good. And so I work harder. And that, that has been in my benefit something that has helped me out in my shit. 
Mm. You know what mm. I mean? So, yeah. yeah, the brother shit. And you got, yeah. Listen, if two, my mom always said, if two minds think alike, one of them is expendable. Mm. That's very true. Mm. That is very true. That's deep. Mm. Shout out to Auntie. That's Linda. a gem. Is mm -hmm. talking drums still in existence? Mm. Of course, in the it, sense that it can't die. I'm, musically, is being is kind of being redefined because yeah. of how everything is working in history. You know what I mean? It comes together. Life I, I think. I think in terms of our chemistry, our upbringing, what we are talking drums is always. But we've gone in different routes. Like this nigga became a whole superstar. He was like a movie star and shit like that. Mm. Yeah. You remember? You know what I mean? It's like so we went in different paths, uh, but I think ultimately, yes, talking drums is what got us here. So it's always gonna be that. Do, do you guys remember your last show? Wasn't that at mm. uh, Le Col Francais with Eddie Blay and them? That was like before yeah. COVID, right? Before yeah, COVID, yeah. Before it COVID. wasn't that long. We, I mean, we just jumped. Oh, we wow. be we be jumping on stage, but so, it's not. Yeah. But it's not like an official, official talking drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So since yeah. since Public Enemy, I don't think we've done like a. Real talking drums. Wait, show. Public Enemy, which which year? Man, it's all like '96 or some shit like that. Right? There was a so since '96. There was first a of all, let me ask you something on this podcast. Why we gotta keep talking about timelines, my nigga? It's the future. Because, it's AI, <laughs> my nigga. We 2027. No, because talking. What are we doing? Drums, <laughs> because <laughs> 20, no, because talking drums runs like you, you guys run several years deep. So I mean, the the year, the specific year should. Should you know counts? Should should actually play official play talk? Oh, official talking drum show. Yeah, the last one we did, we did it in the club, and that's when they had like a stampede and people got hurt and shit. Yeah, yeah, this is before we left Ghana. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it went, it, went, it went a little bit crazy, but we were young. When like, when when was this? That was 1995. Yeah, and they had like a stand wow. a stampede was, in the club. Yeah, it was a going away party. Wow, and people uh, got and, and listen, people got hurt. So it was it's not it's not like a fun thing. Like it's um, like. Um, like it went, it went, it went so crazy that people we, got hurt. Which club? Uh, Tantra. It was called oh, Be wow. Berlin Connection at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was called Berlin Connection, but um, I, I guess we 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 were the group that people saw to have the to, most to, to get their rebelliousness off with. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the yeah. most leverage as far as um, being marketable in in the foreign community. Of course, you know so. We realized that we we produce. Shout out to Panji again. Panji was like, "Yo, we need to get a distribution deal because our competition was Daddy Lumba and them." Of course, you no, that me? wasn't. That wasn't our competition. Who was our competition? No, it wasn't. It was. It was. It was. It was. That was the market, and we were. Like I'm talking about thing. the market. Yeah, but that wasn't our competition. Our comp like a, that was the only thing you could yeah, compare yeah, us. Yeah, to. yeah, 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 exactly. Because there were no rappers back then. Yeah. You know, well, I'm, I don't. 19. I don't want nobody because this thing will get us in trouble. That Lumba is not our competition. <laughs> Stop doing. No, no, because no, I, no, I don't know. No, no, talk no, crazy. No, no. Don't talk crazy. I think crazy, everybody man. understands. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy Lumba is Daddy Lumba. I'm we sure. all know who he is. Nah. Don't get us guy, in trouble. Hey. So a small talking drop. I no. beg you. No, no. Okay, let me let me hey. let, let me rephrase that. High Thank life. You. Rephrase that shit. High yeah. life music was our competition. No, yeah. it wasn't. I don't think that is, is accurate. Okay, okay so yeah, why was not? It? Okay, it's okay, not. so, so why was it? So was it? who was your competition? <laughs> when we started, there was uh, we were our own competition. There was there was nothing there in Ghana at that time yeah, so because we were trying to. What Abeku is saying? This nigga trying to say no, that that we did we did we did we did we did about a kujo entry. What what we could say? Like to compare you with. Someone else in the music industry was high life, you know. The music yeah. he was trying to contextualize the position you guys yeah, were in exactly. because there were no so rappers you, back then. No. back then there was no industry or okay. Yeah. But don't I mean don't we try we, don't try to <laughs> act like we was battling Daddy Lumba. That's not that's not <laughs> true. that's not what I said. That's what you no, said. That's fucked up. Don't do that. That's what you said. You're gonna get us fucked up out here in the streets. It's crazy. Don't do that. Anyway, anyway, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> So go on, like big up to get, Daddy Lumba, my nigga. Yeah, like yeah, we, yeah, know, we know, we know, we know, we know the OGs. Like don't do that. High life was our competition. Yeah. At that time, I mean, at that time we get on stage and at Bomb Tavern, and we'd be like, "Rap came from Africa," and people would laugh at us. They yeah, burst yeah. out laughing. That's that why is I, true. That when is I tell true. you, they called us the African niggas. Laughing. They ain't tell me that nigga. I punch uh, you in the face. Uh, tell you, me that shit. Because you were never around. I was on the streets. <laughs> 
I was on the streets. I was running away uh, from yeah. the house. Yeah. I was sneaking out of the house to go to the club. You were tucked in bed. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I got are we I, gonna do this here on like the people were coming at me. People were coming at me like, yo, but you Africa, you people Africa, Africa boys. Yeah, Batakari, Batakari. Well, boys was wearing. I, I do remember Air a little Jordans. bit of that. I'm not go front. You see, it, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was niggas saying that it, there was that type of vibe. Like, is that not what I said? Yeah. Hey. So you Thank were trying you. to say that Panji, that was the last show, and you guys were heading out of the country. It was like we're yes. trying to get. So we're gonna we we're trying to get a distribution deal. Yeah. You know, because and back then, if you I, grew I, up in can America, can I tell a little story though? Let yeah, me tell yeah. you something. This is this is how real I gotta I gotta say that Panji Anoff is, and I gotta I gotta give him his respect for the game. Because not only, like, he was dealing with Reggie and all that shit before we got here. So he was involved in bringing Reggie back. Like, literally. And we didn't know. We was, like, 15 years old. We didn't know that. So all this Reggie shit, like, and the Pangy Reggie shit, like, it's deep. It's deep. But, like, they were all, like, brothers and shit. And then he brought us on, like, some crisscross shit. Like, you know what I mean? We were yeah. just young boys. And so Pangy, this is how much he believed in this nigga. This nigga had a... um. A drop top golf GTI. And we talking about back in the day, nigga. This is I like, remember that. This is like that, fly. Cabri- I remember that Cabriolet. Like Cabri- yeah. They used to call that shit the Cabriolet. Cabriolet, yeah. They didn't even use that word no more. It was like Cabriolet, nigga, yeah. like a like a chocolate, nigga. Like it was popping. <laughs> you know what I mean? We was we was in the streets. This nigga had that drop and he had the yeah. 808 and the shit with the boom. Boom. Bro, when we when we was left, bro, I had I was trying to figure out how it's going to Morehouse. Niggas was trying to figure out our lives out. Like, yo, this is going. This nigga went to the dude from uh, Desmond's. You remember that show in yeah, England? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a dude from Desmond's. It's Ghanaian. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I, 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 Jabo Asante. Yeah, yeah and this yeah, nigga, and you know Panji's in the mix with all yeah, these niggas. Yeah. This because nigga, Panji roots for the Desmond's. Desmond's. Right, right. This yeah. right, right, is how true. ill this shit is. Yeah. This nigga had a man, like, bro, I'm in Kanishi. This nigga, dro- we went to McCarthy Hill. This nigga had, the yeah. Desmond's nigga had the mansion, like the fucking Hollywood yeah. shit. And he was in there like, Panji, what do you want to do? And he was like, what do you want to do? I was, he was talking, they were talking English shit. Crazy. Yeah. Was British, like, right. British. And then I left. I was like, Panji, what the fuck we doing? He was like, yo, I just sold my GTI. We're flying to America. Panji sold his cabriolet yep. to the Desmonds nigga so that we could fly to America to chase the dream. Shout and out that's Panji. why I'm going to tell you that nobody in the world is ever going to say nothing about Ghana with my nigga Yoda. Shout out to Pangean off on yeah, God. Real talk. Wow. wow. That's dope. And that's how we started our whole mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. from that. He sold his car. So I don't want to hear nothing about nobody with sacrifice or nothing. He really, he really is he put one everything of the, God. On the line. If Reggie's yeah. the Godfather, he's the God, what's it, the God God? The king maker. The, 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 the God body. Yeah, he's the king maker. The the <laughs> the, the, the uh, what, what do you call maker. it? The, like my grandfather, that's what that's what they call him, the kingmaker. Mm. Wow, it's crazy because we we spoken to. I'm looking forward to meeting Panji in person. We spoken to Reggie. I mean, I think the some of the misunderstanding is coming from, and this is just coming from a fan observer. It's coming from taking credit for who named the genre. Now, if I'm listening to Panji, I just checked out a, a bunch of his interviews. He was talking about the genesis of it. And a lot of the scene was, like you guys were saying, performing in school. The culture was bubbling below the surface. It was not right. industry level stuff. Yeah. So some people may feel like, oh, we were rapping in tree before it ever was put on TV. But in anything in life, the first person to get credit for it is the first person to make it on the biggest yeah, stage platform. and level yeah. platform. Whoever, so, whoever, whoever, whoever cracks it and writes the story is going to exactly, get the credit. Exactly, exactly. So Period. I think they both deserve like all the credit, but yeah. I'm super impressed with this story. Selling your whip back then, the kind That's of vision crazy. that you have to have, because man, having a cabriolet no, even now is no, a big deal. My nigga, but, right now, today, that car, like you're not, yeah. he put his life on the line. And okay, this is what I want to say about Pansy and Reggie, because I, I just want to get it. Reggie is the godfather because somebody has to hold the moniker. Somebody has to hold the yeah. torch. And Reggie took the torch and did things that was necessary for hip life to become what it is. And hip life is still becoming something. We're going to zoom out. It's, it's becoming something I don't even think we know what it's about to be yet. It's, but 
but it's in its transitional stages. Reggie took that shit, but Panji was the tree behind that branch. And so everything needs to be acknowledged the way it needs to be. One should be the godfather, but that don't mean you 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 uh you disengage with the fucking shit that happened that that yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. both yeah, and they so and they can exist together. Coexist. Yeah. Period. For real, for real, for yeah. real. Because I'm gonna keep it 100. No Pansy, no Reggie. I don't give a fuck. No Pansy, no Reggie, no Reggie, no Pansy, no Reggie, no Pansy, no Beku, no Quaku. Fuck everybody yeah. in the world. Yeah. <laughs> boss, yes, boss, 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 my nigga, boss, my nigga, <laughs> boss. So, so, um, <laughs> what I do? Uh, what I do? No, but, no, no, but, no, but. As, as, as far as I'm concerned, right? Pansy is my G. Panji will break his no back for you. No back mountain. Man. Yeah. Um, wait, I wait, wait, wait. Uh, it, it, Paul, put, put, it, put, it, put it Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Panji <laughs> isn't always right, but Panji will always have your back. Yeah. He's, always, he's in the right. Yeah, he's in the yeah. right. Yeah. His, his heart, heart yeah. is he's in the right place. Pure. Yeah. And yeah. that's one thing 100%. I can't say about a lot of people in this industry. Yeah. That's yeah. what's so crazy about yeah. him. It's like most people we want, we know yeah. what we want, the yeah. money and the... That's the one dude. Yeah. Charlie, free your mind. So now, um, talking drums um came to being or came to light at a at an at an era where, you know, it was hard to stream. There were no streaming so, platforms. <laughs> there was no social media. There, there was, was no internet. That technology there, even didn't exist. There was yeah. no there was no cell phones. Yeah, yeah. there was there, there there were no cell phones. There was like there was no internet, like basically nothing. You know, someone had to look out for your CDs in 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 a store or your, somewhere. Or your tape, your tape. Or your tape, tape not, yeah. not, not CD, tape. Tape, because yeah, you guys, cassette. Yeah, 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 cassette. And now, if, if you look back at the current tech trends and, you know, how artists are finding it easy to connect with fans, like, yeah. so easily, do you, are you, are you guys paying that, oh, we should have come come up at this era or talking drums should have happened during this era era that's a ill question i'm gonna let quick i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let yeah. you go ahead and rock that um firstly i think like i said we grew up we were born and came up in the era of technology and a technology and so for us to now see the culmination of some of the things that we would watch like even cartoons mm. like the jetsons yeah you know, that we would watch the movies, Back to the Future, all of these things that we were watching. Now we're seeing it, it's actually happening. And yeah. now there's AI and there's this and there's that. I think it's amazing, but at the same time, you have your place. We all have our place in the timeline of this thing that has become such a monstrosity of, of a wealth creator mm -hmm. for African, uh, yeah. young Africans. So for me, I can't even say that because I, I don't know who we would be as far as evolution if our music or we were making, we wouldn't have been making that type of music if we were at that point where the technology, I think I, I, think I just look back and I, I see people like, let's say, Burner Boy and like, okay, he's doing exactly what he needs to be for that time. Yeah, you know, because he's the evolution of us. Yeah, Wiz Kid. Yeah. Uh, you know, David Do. Yeah, all these guys. Sakodi. Sak Sakodi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like big up Sak. Big up Sak. So I feel like everybody has their place. Deolin, and if you feel that you can find a way to still stay relevant, as we've all stayed relevant throughout all these years, it was like thirty years plus. They are okay, very. Keep doing numbers, they are man. very. I don't like that. Like, I'm not be doing numbers. Like I'm the silver. <laughs> I'm bringing us back to but like it's like. Tell it, nigga. Me, right me, now, me, nigga. 2024, 20, nigga. What, let what, me what, let what? me make things clear. I'm the silver <laughs> dragon. Me, I'm ageless. Who? I'm ageless and I'm timeless. I like that line, silver dragon. Yeah, man. I'm silver ageless. Dragon. I'm timeless. So I don't fear age. What is age? You know, I come from the ages. My 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 DNA is millions and millions and millions of years old. 
That's that's what a genius is. Quaker T. One that has been able to delve into their DNA Baca. to express that thing that came way back from the ancestors. Baca. So why should I fear time? Baca. I don't live in time. Baca. I transform time. Baca. Mm. Bars. Bars, my nigga. Bars, Grick, 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 grick. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, wait, wait. Um, talking about time. Let's talking not. Like, why, 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 why we keep talking about time? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't want to talk time. about no time. No. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what time it is. No, no, no. no. I, I actually appreciate it. Uh, I just joke. But, I'm just wait, joking. Huh? No, do you know something? Me, I hate talking about time. No, and I think good. that's that's what's keeping me young. I'm right. with it. I'm with it. I'm yeah, with it. yeah. What is it about time that gets you all, you know, you know, like flustered? Ah, like, why? Like, okay. It's not about time. It's not about that. Um, let me get my thoughts together. Talking drums, the thing we're here for, right, was successful in Ghana at the time that we were doing it. We were, we were, 15, 16 years, years old. Um, but life, life has gone on and we've gone on to do some, some fucking incredible things. I would like to believe it's for the world to decide if they think it's incredible. And so when I come back to Ghana and they call it brain drain, you know, we say, um, brain drain, like your greatest leave. Mm -hmm. Some of the reason we back is because we like, fuck it. We'd have made millions of dollars for some of the people who may, may not have our best interests at heart. And now we want to come back and just bring our energy back. That's what the reverse of brain drain is. It's like we coming back. You know what I mean? And when I come back, a lot of things that people want to focus on are uh, the years when I was uh, 15 and 16 years old, which was amazing because I know what we did. It's, I'm literally here because of, of those years. But it's like it's like it's like Grammys. It's like twenty million. It's like twenty million. There, there are things that people don't know about, and so sometimes I, I just want to hesitate on the past because I'm like, yo, we I'm still, still I'm we still, still we still yeah, alive. Active. I'm still active. Not not only am I, am I active, I'm bigger than I've ever done. Nigga. I'm I'm forty million. I'm forty million plus in the game. I've rapped with your bet. I've rapped with your favorite rapper. I've done everything. Like and I know that it's not we're not name dropping, but. I hesitate to turn back and focus on ah uh, this is what we did when I'm popping right now and so yeah. fuck all that shit on life and I, I don't mean to be disrespectful but fuck all that past shit nigga when I die then y'all can do talking drums and then while we here we gonna do Beku Kweku you right now I'm gonna talk yeah. like you know what I mean what y'all doing right now it's gonna grow it's not yeah, yeah, right. I'm not so, gonna be like yo, so yo. I was gonna I was gonna come to that because. I feel for our audience, because we have a, a vast array of young people listening to us. And it's crazy for me to be calling people even young people, because like you guys, we yeah, we growing. I, I live we through grow. those lenses where I don't feel affected by times. So I still feel young. I feel yeah. connected. But I do realize that there are younger people looking up to us. And yeah. for a lot of them, they don't even know the stories mm -hmm. and the genesis and the time that people have put in. Mm -hmm. So for me, for instance, I go, I'm, lis I'm listening to your music. I think you're making some really dope music Thank you. Of, as of present. Thank um, you. I've seen a few of the features that you're doing. But a young person may see you on a feature with like Manifest or whatever and be like, oh, this guy. He just came. Is He just came, Manifest. But they need to know that as like a present day artist put in like, you know, a Rakim or a KRS-One. Yeah. On a record. That's OG yeah, respect. Right, like you yeah. have to tip your hat off to Beku and Kweku T before you recognize the modern day artist that you think is big. So this is an opportunity for them to not only get to know who you are now, but what you've done. What gives you your stripes? Why they should pay attention when you talk? Because you are definitely a legend of the game, OG in the game, and they may not know that. So that's I think where we're coming from trying to spread the story out and then we can come to the present so everybody can know these are the dudes that have you and, know, and, put I, blood, and, sweat, and, and I do appreciate that and I do honor that and I do say thank you for that man because because not a lot of people get that and so 
That's yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. I do honor that. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I, 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 I feel that. Thank you. Thank I you. think personally, from from my perspective, I think it's a travesty if we do not acknowledge the past and hold it in certain reverence, because this is the reason, part of the reason why Africa is in the state it's in right now, because we've just it, it's just been oratory. Mm. You understand? We haven't documented anything. That's the thing. You know, so you you when I look yeah, at nah, you, you you dropping you dropping you dropping big facts right here. You know, right? like people need to know because there's I some, don't disagree. There's some kids that are like, "Yo, you really did that? Mm. Oh my God! Then I need to go and do my history, because and when they do their history, shout out to Kojo Q. He's one of them guys. When they do big their up, history, big up, Kojo, it, Kojo it makes Q. them better. Yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. them better artists, yeah. more well-rounded yeah. artists. Yeah. It's just like. One of those boys in America saying, uh, I think it was Kodak Black or something, saying, I, I don't know who Tupac is. Yeah. But but let me let me let me take it a step further if you don't mind. If you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, I, go ahead, bro. Because I'm on your joint, but like the whole point of this, what you're doing right here, is because right right now we are like <clears throat> we're tapping into some sort of energy and you guys are growing. So right now you guys are like young, but the purpose is I know we are going. Y'all, y'all gonna be big. I already, I can, I can see where y'all going. Mm-hmm. But my point is to, to entertain the future and respect the past. All I don't want is that we just be like, yo, we dope because we. I hate that kills me, and I feel like sometimes in Africa, even with us, we gotta zoom out. And I hope I'm not going crazy with this. No, but, no, I'm um, following you. I think Matoma's like, there right there. Like, 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 yo, like, like, yo, we we know what we did. It's tomorrow, my nigga. On the block, you ever been on the block before? You can't. It's tomorrow, 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 yeah. tomorrow. So let's honor the past, but let's 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 also incorporate the future. Let's incorporate this energy and go. We're gonna do better because this is what we did in the past. Yes, it's, instead of that, the, what they're saying am I, is, am, I, am I going crazy? No, you make sense, but the thing is, how there, there has to be a genesis. How can we incorporate the past into the future if we don't acknowledge the past? No, I'm saying we should. We should acknowledge. But the past. you ha- you have to understand that this history in modern times hasn't really been told. Told. That yeah. also. I mean, after I'm, a while, I'm in two minds because you're correct. After a while, well, you, can, you can only it? talk about this for so long. This is but after problem. a while. This is cool. my problem. Who should tell it? Because we're still alive. Who should tell this history story if I feel like I'm a warrior and I'm about to go to battle? Like, I'm not ready for so, this history so let me, story. Let me, let, oh, let me try to paint it in, the, in a different but light. But we make history every am I, am day. So, we make history every day. So what, we're telling the story every day. day. But I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, uh, when we're talking to Eddie Blay, we were hoping that at some point, because you take the NBA, for instance. There's so many legends of the game that were not fortunate to make the kind of money that they helped to build the industry to become. Amen. But that's sport. That's physical Amen. activity. So you can't engage when you're old 60, yeah. Right? Yeah, right? You guys are still active in your creative spaces and you're still making stuff. But I think the reason why a platform like If More Let's Divide wants to have the opportunity to even be in the same space as I consider you guys legends. I'm old enough to not still be like in fandom, but I, I right. as I've gotten older, I even recognize the magnitude of what you guys even did more because you're 15, 16, killing shit. And it's embedded in my brain. So for me, my sense of pride, because you have to remember, you don't own yourself anymore. Once yeah. you put your art out there, yeah. we're yeah. all part of your thing. Public consumption. So we're like, man, we in order for everybody to fully appreciate the genre, hip life, and all of that, we get to be graced by these legends. So those out there watching have to go do their research. And fortunately for what's happening now, when you put in you and Quaker T, Baku and Quaker T, there's only one Talking Drums video on YouTube. But guess what? All your new stuff is right there. I, I literally watched all your stuff today. I didn't even know about awesome. it. Awesome. So that's that's an opportunity for us to reintroduce your greatness to the world. And that's what I love about what we're doing because I feel like once people get to know 
what time you've put in the game, they're yeah. even gonna respect what you're doing now more. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. and, and, and let me give can we, can we, can we, can we Give me, give me a clap for that fucking shit right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. what you doing, for real, for real, thank you for that too. Yeah. Because we don't, it's not enough of these type of platforms of what you're doing. So I think you guys are going to be real big. And you know what I mean? I'm honored, yeah. I'm honored thanks, to be thanks, here thanks. just just thanks. for that, man. Let's, I'm, I'm going to bring the Batakari with hoodie back. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's free. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, so that's that was a perfect segue um, to my next question. So, um, first, Beku, um, you um, you featured on Manifest Song. Um, um, I've forgotten the title. Look at where we started. It's called the Gamble. Yeah, the, the Gamble. gamble yeah, yeah, the Gamble. Yeah. Did you did you write write a hook? I did. Yes. Yes, yes I did. Yes. Yeah, um, I tweeted that like yes, like when it first dropped. That that's one of the best hooks I've heard in a while. In a while, wow! Look at where we like seriously. Before is that this the podcast, newer one or is that the older one? Because there's two. Uh, look at where we, no, that's the gamble. That's that's from his uh, album. Like, yeah. Most from, recent. From, yeah, yeah, the the the, the one that. That blew up, like you know, the okay, burner yeah, boy joined. Yeah, yeah. The video no, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up where we first, yeah, yeah. No. And, yo, also, mm -hmm. big up manifest, big up free, big up, big Shout up that can't, big up, yeah, big up all the all them, all them, all them the people family. in Ghana who yeah. are pushing that edge. Manifest is one of them, yeah. one of them yeah. dudes, yeah. Yo, yeah. that hook is dope. Yeah. Thank that you, hook bro. is dope. Like, yeah. I tweeted, like, when it first dropped, like, that was two, three years ago. Uh, right before COVID. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, nobody knows how time is yeah. before COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's, it's so dope. It's so how Thank did you. that feature come about? <coughs> <sighs> All right. Uh, first and foremost, me and Manifest have a a wonderful relationship as like a friendship. This is outside of music. Real, real. Like you know, what I mean, uh, somebody who I found. Kind of, we go through kind of similar things. Kind of help me out, finding this music thing out. You know what I mean? So you know what I mean. Our music relationship is good, and he brought me through. And honestly, what had happened was I was in um, a parallel relationship with a woman, horrible relationship. Mm. And and manifest caught me, and he was just like, "Listen," he was like, "I need you," and he was like, "If I was I was in, I was in tatters, like I was I was fucked up," and he was like, "Listen." And this is why I got to give him respect. He was like, give me what you're feeling. He, he was like, he, he did that. He was like, tell whatever you, this thing you going through, just put it on the microphone. And I just sang it into the microphone. And that's, that's what happened. Shout and that's why you got to give my, uh, Manifest some real shit because shout, he, he shout, allowed, shout, shout, yeah, shout. he allowed that. And then that, that was some real shit. Dudes. Yeah. Dope, dope, dope. Wow. And, and, and to be like no like I'm not trying to guess anything any 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 anyone up like that hook is dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Thank you. No, no, and real yeah. talk and, and, and shout out to his and, team yeah. because music doesn't as much as I would love to say that I sang it, music comes from like so many different ingredients. So I wanna big up Fui, I wanna big up Manifest, I wanna big up I wanna big up Kwame Fight. I, I just wanna big up everything that all of this shit is not one like I wish it was just me. It's just not. Wait, did you always sing? No, 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 no. Ah, quickle. No, no, no. Did he no, ask no. you that question? No, <laughs> nah, I mean that's why it's phenomenal what you're doing now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Crazy, like, like yeah. on key, yeah. everything was so on point. Yeah, like, I didn't even believe it was you. The first record I hit when I was singing, I'm like, okay, when is the rapping gonna start? It was you came from inside your house and you met the dudes out. Outside your house, and you guys were rolling through you the talk, street. You talking about uh, the John? Uh, 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 release your body. Release yeah, your body. Release, release your body. Yeah, release. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah that's Pansy. Yeah, that's yeah. Pansy. Yeah. Okay. Y'all put on. The point Shout I'm trying to make is, I swear to God, I wish it was just me. It's just impossible. It's not. Yeah. It's so mm -hmm. many different mm -hmm. things. So I have uh, questions for you both. I want to start with Abeku. And then to Kweku T. But a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm discovering is very dope. You still can tell that your creative energy is still like boundless and you're still in a space where 
you want to put, you're still inspired to put stuff into the universe. Mm -hmm. So my question to both of you is, creatively, where do you guys feel like you're at? And how much of an impact is your experience or your past influencing what you do given the current like music climate, how it's evolved from hip life to now Afrobeat and Afrofusion, Afropop, people coming up with all kinds of names to mm. Afro. Yeah, shout out to Afro. Shout yeah, out to Afro. Shout out to Afro. Yeah, all shout kinds of names to, to describe shout what they do. Afro. Like what was the energy that's informing what you do and what's inspiring it and all that? Can I start? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick, quick, you want to start? You sure? No, no, because it's going to go crazy if I start. All right. Well, for me, yeah. for me, I think, like, my process is, it's organic and it's spiritual, you know. So, Abeku was positioned to, like, be an artist out there, you know. But I came back to Ghana, and I had to survive in the Ghana territory. Mm. So I ended up doing everything outside of my mainstay, which was making music. Okay. So I did the, the TV, I did radio, I did movies, did Big Brother. Did, okay. Because everything I did was like, it was like a marketing tool. Mm. So that whenever I dropped something new, it's like, okay, now I, I have a new fan base. Yeah. I only did Big Brother to get a, like, a Africa fan base. If there was always marketing, we got on a plane to go to America to market to to get a distribution deal to market our product. Everything I've done has been a means to an end, but I'm grateful for everything I've done because it's led me to this space right here, you know. So, um, it's it's interesting that we're doing this podcast right now because I'm I'm at a point in my life where I'm not doing many interviews. And I'm not doing interviews because Prince. I, I don't think people really appreciate like the time that you spend with them to speak and yeah, and, yeah. And, you Amen. know, no, that's real. They just that's, want that's, content, that's real shit. That's real you know. Shit. And I'm not, you know, if yeah. if if I'm gonna make content, then let's, let's drop a million dollars and let's let's do it. Right. But if we're really gonna have a conversation and we're doing it in with respect, absolutely, you know, and admiration for one another, and that's why we're all here, you know. So. um yeah, just, you know, being in Ghana, I've had to, I, I, I always say either you evolve or you die. Mm. Mm. So I've had to follow an Amen. evolutionary pace you as far as, yeah, as far as what I do. Because I was, like he said, I was running. Then I was, I told you I was designing clothes because, you know, I, I couldn't get the uniform that I wanted, you know, because people would go outside and buy jeans. Because GIS, we would wear jeans, like black jeans or whatever, mm. and a white shirt. So I was designing the clothes that I thought would look fly, and I'd be able to fit in with the people, with the, the people who would get this stuff from outside. Right. You know, so everything has been a means to an end. Mm. And the, the end is the sky, and the sky is the limit, and who knows the limit to that. So, so creatively, specifically to music, do you find yourself still wanting to create or doing stuff or where are you in terms of music right now? Yeah, I always create. I stopped putting music out there because I don't know if you remember the, the there was a period, the payola period. Uh, yeah, Reg, yeah, yeah. Reggie used to yeah. wear, wear some shit, no payola. No, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I realized that we're giving, we're giving DJs content, but we have to pay them to play the content mm. that gives the station money. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, okay, so if we haven't learned anything from the past and we're still doing this Paola thing, then I'm not releasing music no more. I will make the music. I won't release it until it's right. Spiritually, I didn't think that it made sense for me to start, at this age, start releasing music when we should have opened doors for the young people to monetize their music. We shouldn't be competing with them. So I was like, next time I put something out there, it means that I'm gonna make a young boy money mm -hmm. and that's why I'm on the track and then we can continue the evolution. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I'm not coming here as Kwaku T, know who I am, yeah, Charlie me, I be OG or that type of thing, no. OG, if you're an OG, that means you put people on, you are a kingmaker. Mm -hmm. That's why we're calling out certain names here. 
talk about Panji. Moncrado. There you go. Moncrado. Uh, 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 Jagaban. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. OG, Kingmaker. So until you you help somebody who has come up under you, monetize, which I've seen that a lot of you know my 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 colleagues mm. have had artists and they've kind of not allowed the artists to express themselves, you know, as they should. And eventually there's been beef and so on. There's no way that a young man should have beef with an elder. Yeah, yeah. You understand? I mean, it's not our culture. Before Biku answers the same question, yeah. I kind of want to plug into something mm-hmm. real quick. I am experiencing you maybe the second time in full. Yeah. And I feel like you have a lot to say. You yeah. have a lot of things that you should be sharing. Right. Is there space for the universe that exists right now in the format that it's in, like somebody like me mm-hmm. who wants to actively consume your music to maybe tap into what is within you to say, okay, yes, I understand all that you just said about, you know, looking out for the next generation and all that. But 444, when it came out, I was one of the first people to line up to, if it was a CD, I would have bought five of them. It was a tradition right. of mine. Big I've been a J fan my whole Big life. Right. But I'll go into Me the too. store. I don't care what he drops. I'm picking 10 Me too. and yeah. I'm distributing it out and giving right. it to people. Right. So in the same vein, because I know you have a lot to say and there's places that you've been that I will never go and we look up to you musically. Maybe, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm saying we're selfishly wanting to know what you're cooking and maybe you might not think that is the right thing, but some of your fans may be still fiending for your music. Do you think about it sometimes? I get it. I, I mean, every time I go out into like a public space, whether it's a restaurant or the mall, or whatever, like people come up to me like Charlie, by you, why? You stop the music. Like, wh- what's going on? It's it's a process. Like you know, um, I've I've never. Okay, let's say the last time I cut my hair bald was maybe nineteen ninety four or something, right? I've never shaved in my life. It was just like last this year that I shaved my beard for the first time. I say this to say that I let everything that I felt defined me, the fans, the athletics, the half bull, the, the beard, the macho guy, all of those aesthetics that were outside of me, I had to let it go so that I can rebuild, I can recreate. I had to, I, I had to unbecome me mm. to now become me. Mm. So I'm right now I'm like a canvas. Okay. So now I'm putting I'm painting I'm painting the picture or the artwork according to what I believe should be there now because I'm no longer listening to the noise. Right. I blocked out the noise. Mm. So we got a new single that we we're, we're, we're about to drop. Before what we would do is we get in the studio and you know Panji's process. Before we get in the studio Record the song within like maybe a three hour period and we'll go straight to the club and give it to the DJ. Yeah. But this is a song that up till now has taken like maybe like a month. Wow. And we're still deliberating on okay, this is how we're gonna put the song out. This is the content that we're gonna create. And I'm enjoying it. I'm not rushed. By the re- way, you heard it here first. Yeah. On the yeah. podcast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You'll be the first. Yeah. So I, I think um I think it comes with maturity too, you know? So right now, when you hear what I give you, you'll appreciate it for the true essence that I'm putting into the ether. Not that, Charlie, Kwekuti just dropped new one. You understand yeah, me? Yeah. When you hear my voice, Motombo, I played a, 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 my first single for Motombo, and Motombo was like, ah, yeah, but quick, I thought this one, it, it would be more hypo. I thought it'd be faster. Yeah. I was like, ah, I can't please everybody. But if maybe I had taken my time with the rollout of that song, maybe the effect would have been different. Mm. You know, yeah. I've always rushed to release music mm. because it was like, I need to be relevant. I need to be relevant. And now I'm like, yo, I've been relevant my whole life. I'm still alive. 
you know, there are people that just passed. Condolences, Cynthia, R.I.P. Cynthia Kwaku. You know, R.I.P. Cynthia. Rest in peace. Yeah, Mama C. Rest in peace, Mama C. And we're we're still here. Cynthia was one of the people I had in mind. Like, her name is in my part. Like, her name is in my part to have her on this spot. Like, law lawyer, a lawyer, you know, very, very dope. I'll keep it 100. She's one of those people that you don't understand how how you can enter somebody's life and exit somebody's life yeah. and then become this thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, she didn't have to enter. Mm. I could have been cool, but she entered in our life and changed our life. Yeah. And then as she exits, we, 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 yeah. we have to give big ups to some of our women who we don't give yes, big ups to. Like yeah. Lillian big Blankson. Up, yeah, big up Cynthia, man. I swear to God. On life, I'll take care of her children. Like you know, what I mean, we good. But um, yeah. So um, big, big, um mm-hmm. Fred, question. What's um, up, Fred? You, About you your should... creative like drive and what's inspiring you to keep putting out music, and you know all that. What informs you from your past that allows you to still be an artist? You know. All right. So if I if I may be able to talk candidly, just quick like quick did. I don't approach it in the same way. I don't. I think that the past for me is something completely different. The past for me is just like it's like an indication that I'm going in the right direction, and we've been very fortunate in our past. And this is why I'm so hesitant to like stop what I'm doing. Um, my inspiration is like, how do I say this? How do I say this? How do I say this without being? I've been in, I've been in a room with the best people in the world. You know what I mean? I've 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 I've, I've been humble enough to be around some of the best people that I know that I'm not bullshitting. I know it's real, and so for me, it's like a God thing. It's like God gave me something. I don't know what the fuck it is, but I'm like yo, and it's like I'm here with with so and so. Right? Why? Why? Like, how the fuck am I here? Why am I here? Let me can I appreciate it? Let me see it. And then and then that person is feeling feeling the shit. And I'm going. And I've made a whole career off of that. And it's and it and it's still going. Like it's growing and growing and growing and growing. So for me, when I look at the past, it's like it's like an avocado tree that's that's growing. You you want me to stop it and look at the seed? The seed is what got me here. Of course it's it's a it's an avocado seed. We have been so blessed. I don't know how to make an understanding of it, Matumbo. If you want to understand it to your question, mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. I met my Angelo when I was fifteen. Farrakha, like I don't know. How I was with Kweku. I don't know how any of this thing happened. It's miraculous to me, and I'm trying to still make an understanding of it. But what I don't want to disrespect is this energy that I got to keep going. And right now, I'm at the forefront with the dopest niggas I've ever seen in my life. I've been in, I've been in the studio with some of the greatest niggas, and all I don't want to do is stop, because that's when I feel like some somehow, some way, I've disrespected the ancestors. If the, whatever this well, gift, the gift is, I got. You're giving, yeah. it's, all I got is like, yo, this is it. Keep going. Yeah. And so it's a, it's. I'll keep it real. It terrifies me. To stop and look back, because for me it means it's over. I don't want to stop and look back. Yes, we come from this, and this means all of us from Africa. Yes, we come from this. But what the fuck are we doing today, tomorrow? Like, what are we gonna do? Because we we gonna have to do this. And so I just get inspired by the new niggas, even if I don't understand them. I'm from a different generation. I love these new niggas. I love it because I don't understand it. And so it's some new shit for me. Like, it's like, what the fuck is this? I don't understand. Like, you know what I mean? And, I, and I'm trying to put this in perspective in the sense that if you got something great, don't give up. Just, just, just run it. Run it till the wheels fall off. And this is what I say about, I, I try to say this about life. We are born into this life, right? It's like a bicycle. This is all it's like. You ever rode a bicycle before? Yep. All right. What happens when you get on the bicycle? 
If you want to ride it, you got to start moving. You can't stop. If you slow down, you stagnate, you fall off. They, they call that uh, uh, order. That's what they call order. Mm-hmm. You stagnate, you fall off. If you ride a bike, you go too fast, they call that chaos. You ride it, you fall off. It's, you fall off. Everything in life is about riding that bicycle in between everything. Everything. So first thing you do is you find your balance. Second thing you do is you find your rhythm. Third thing you do is you find your lane. You stay in that motherfucker, and then you ride it till the wheels fall off. My nigga. And that's all dope, I want to do. Dope, 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 dope. dope. Yes, dope. Sir. Um, what would you want your kids to know about talking drums and even what you did after talking drums? Like, if you would be known, what would you be known for? Like, what do you wish you would be known for? If you asked me this at the beginning, it would be different than the question I'll answer now. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I I wish I would be known for being a a hero or being strong. If you ask me now, I would like to be known for something that can really give forth to the bigger thing that we are. It's like a, like a, there's, there seems to be some sort of a collective thing going on. that we Culturally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you ask me now, I wish to contribute something that we know that we are stronger than everything we've ever been. And I can just be an, an example of that so that people, like when I came up, they can go, yo, you, you remember Bay Cool? And they go, yeah. rah, and they go, rah. And it becomes something that hopefully can drive. Something that becomes part of the greater process of myself. Dope. I don't know what that Dope. means, Dope. though. Yeah. Kweku. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the name Kweku means bringer of light, creator of light, father of light. So for me, I would, I would, I, I would rest in peace knowing that my children understood that I, sh- I, I brought some light to the corner of the earth mm. that I was born in, mm. and I made it a, a, a better than how I found it, and I, I opened some doors, and I gave people some opportunities for them to feed their families. And hopefully, because I did that, they can walk in my footsteps and do the same and pay it forward and have other people pay it forward. And the more we do that, each one teach one, we generate wealth amongst yeah. ourselves. As Africans, you know, so yeah. You went, you represented Ghana in the Big Brother Africa. I knew you were going to do that. (laughs) Yeah, you you (laughs) represented Ghana in the Big Brother Africa. Is it a competition or, you know, whatever, a show? You know, it was a show. How, How did your family feel about being in the house and... How did they help you? You know, the funny thing is, I was a part of peer pressure. I mean, I'm always going to be peer Big up Kwame Fachi, big up G.I., big up Eddie Blizzy. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I think this is also where peer pressure comes in. Because, you know, my parents, Big Brother found, like my year at least, they found a way to inculcate the family into the show yeah so my parents came the first day you know they came and they they spoke on stage and stuff and i think i had a fake eviction Mm. yeah i had a fake eviction my mother couldn't come so my father came so all over the tabloids and stuff kweku's parents are so intelligent kweku's parents are this they're that so I think they didn't have time to think about the yawa that was going on in the house. Uh-huh. But once in a while, when they'd hear about it, they'd be like, oh, my son, my son. <laughs> you know, because my parents aren't party people. They're, they're homebodies, aside from my father going to visit his friends. They but, are very traditional. Yeah, they're very traditional. You know, so... My tombo, you know. <laughs> my <laughs> tombo, you know. It's interesting. For that, for that <laughs> My tombo, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's interesting that when... When I came out of bless, the house, bless, bless, bless up for that Santi Henny's in the building. Yeah. Can, you know, give me, give me one of them claps. 
Bless her for the Asante Henny's in the building. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so you know um i remember i i came out of the house and my mother called me and my mother called me and i, I was like oh shit i'm gonna hear it and she goes hi Kweku, you're a hero did i say you're a hero i was like what what did i do that that i didn't see any heroic thing about what i did in the house but i showed our culture our Ghanaian culture and I cooked mm. I cooked and cutting quiet peanut butter soup and stuff. Like I I expressed the ultimate I expressed everything that I felt like we we began to express about Ghana, Africa and our culture when we started talking drums. I took it there mm. to that yeah. because I only did Big Brother for the fan base. Mm -hmm. mm. I needed another another oh, way man. to you know, market the product, the music, you know, so it never really, it wasn't, it, it wasn't really, it never really got to that point yeah, where I was like, yeah. ah, Johnny, you, you went to do Big Brother, and you did Yawa, or whatever. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, some of those moments, mom, dear, you know, try, but, yeah, yeah. you know, but we're proud of you still. Dope, dope, yeah. Dope. One of the things I also enjoy about the podcast is we talk about everything. There's yeah. no limits on what we talk about, but, to see to witness you in person, it makes me curious about you spoke about Beku spoke about going through a tumultuous relationship with a woman and how much of a struggle it was, but being able to pour that out into his creative energy because another artist was willing to let him, you know, live on that record mm. as who he was. And I know you have kids as well. Um how do you, one of my favorite shows from the first season, or favorite themes from the first season, was fatherhood. And we talk about that quite a bit. Um, because as young men, you know, we see some faults with our parents and we try to do better. But then as you get older, you don't know if you're doing better right. or you're doing the wrong thing. How does your, your own trajectory, what you've been through, how does that inform how you parent, how you father in terms of, like, for instance, your dad was in all the way down with you being a creative person, a rapper. Mm. Same with you, Abeku. But now you have young kids. You might be inclined to do the same or you might be inclined to push them out there to be themselves. I just want to get an insight into how you bring... Is there a stark difference between how you parent and who you are as a creative? Not at all. Mm. I think for I allow... I allow my children, mind you, let me be all the way real. I've only been able to be, I'm raising a child right now. I have three children. They're two in different parts of the world. So the one I have here, my youngest, is the one that I've, I've grown with more or less. Mm. Mind you, the, our relationship is very symbiotic. You know, in, the, in so many different, spiritual in so many different ways, but I'll tell you this. I, I, I feel saddened for some men who don't understand the growth or the, 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 the fact that they're, they're one and the same with their children, mm. right? My son, observing my son, taught me how dope of an individual I am. It helped me understand that, ah, Kwegu, I'll give you an example. One day I was watching him. I was in my garden. I was watching him doing this thing. And in my head, I was like, hey, this guy is a dope boy. And then there was a, another thought that came into my head was like, how about who, who made the boy? So if that's the dope boy, you're the genesis of the dope boy. So what does that make you? So just observing our likeness and the fact that this, I see this guy, he's always running. So I'm like, okay. You know, I see this guy, he's using big words. I'm like, okay, I see this guy. He, he, he wants to pick out his own outfits for school, you know, or to go to the mall or to go out, that sort of thing. I realize the similarities. So for me, the only thing I'm supposed to do is be a guide because they came on their own 
with their own plan. Me, I'm just supposed to make sure that they don't fall into too many gutters. You know, so whatever you want to do, the money will be there to do it. So all you need to do is just be passionate about it and be steadfast and believe in yourself and your ability to do this thing. And whatever you want to do, me, dear, Charlie. Because at, yeah, at the end of the day, you'll always have like a fortune to fall on in the future. Mm. But just make yeah. sure you're happy and you make other people around you happy. And that's yeah. it. So, yeah. Big. Yeah, big. This you. Up? Same question to you. He don't no, got no, no, no kids. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, but no, 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 but uh, rephrase, re- say the question again because he, yeah. he just he just said it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was saying. I, was <laughs> I, feel, saying I, feel, I feel like this, I just went off. Like mm-hmm. you know what yeah. I mean? I'm, I'm going on his vibe. Say the question again. We're, we're just trying to find out how your who you are as a person, your experiences with your own parenting as in your parents parenting you if how it informs how you parent your kids if you have kids if you have kids and if if you don't have kids how are you going to parent your kids yeah once you have kids i think i think we all are learning to live in a paradox i know that i know that's a hard thing to understand we are all learn, learning to live in, in inside this um what our parents raised us with and what we are trying to give to our children. If I may say anything, which is a, a dangerous thing, and maybe one day I'll be blessed with my children. I'm, I'm trying to follow him. He's he's like a father, like like a real real thing. So okay. as much as I talk shit about Kwaku, he's like an actual father who I look up to because he's like a dope father. You mm. know what I mean? I have I haven't had children yet. Okay. Okay, same. Through, I don't have kids. Yeah, so. yeah, but through my parents, I'm going to say this. All we can try to do is do this little little grasp of what they had, what we're trying to do, and what's coming. I just feel like it's it's about this, this thing that we're doing. And if I have the opportunity... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you remind me of a conversation. That I we can't. Had. I, on some real shit, I can't think of. To this, we've all had the job, like we've had. You know what I mean, some yeah. nice things. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice thing. <laughs> no, no, but this that, that gotta, this got to be the best, the best shit you can ever have in your life. Mm. If you can have it, if you have a child and guide them. As hard as this world is, as difficult as this world is, because this world is crazy. Humans are crazy, but up until this point in my experience, through everything, Lambos, yachts, every, Pri- like Puff jets. Puff Daddy, like whatever, it seems to me like if you can have a child that you can really do some shit with, better than anything you can do in your life, and I, and I respect anybody, and I will honor anybody, and if I can do that, my nigga, wow. but we, 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 yeah, if we can do that. Fuck your yacht and fuck everything, nigga. Fuck wow. Lambo. If I could get a warrior young like me, you crazy. Wow. Get the fuck out of here. Dope. Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Charlie, 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 Charlie. Um, Fred. Yeah. Been a dope conversation, Charlie. So, Beku, you have one question for Fred. Yeah, I do. I do. I got, I got, big, I got a big question for Fred. Kweku has one question for me. Then shut, wait, shut, no, no, shut, 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 shut. Wait. Question, quick, let's switch it up because I got one for Matumbo too. Okay, this nigga think I mean, he's gonna be safe. I mean, cool. Like, I know, so, babe, we gonna ask the same question for this nigga. So, okay. can we switch for this nigga? Okay, <laughs> sure. Let's, yeah, do yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, you start. Yeah. All right. So, while we talk, because I'm multitasking my mind, mm-hmm. while we talk, um, there's there's a statement that I made about, um, if if less, if more, let's if divide. More, if, let's if more, divide. Doesn't let's that, uh, divide. Isn't that, that divisive? Isn't that divisive? Given that, that's actually, like that's actually a banging question. Yeah, because that's a that's a Sun Tzu Sun Tzu little, little move. He you got you. Yeah, because Africa is more right. Mm. Yeah, but we are so divided, and we have so many divisive ways. Yeah. So 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 yeah. I mean, I I, I think I get you. 
but um how 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 you understand the name of the podcast is totally different from our definition or our understanding. Yeah. So if more let's divide, it was coined from the math, you know, term if know. more let's, let's divide, yeah. You know, fractions. Right. So if right. more let's divide basically means if w- more. W- w- were you there when you chose the name? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you yeah. there all of this? Yes. You yes. are involved. Yes. yes. So, so in other words, you were, you were there, you say yes. Yeah, 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 no, for yes. sure, for yes. sure. So, 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 big. So, 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 so let me. No, no, but this is, he's, no, he's no, every, no, for real, for real. No, no, he's finish, every no, parent that all of us have ever had. Yeah. This is what they told us. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying. So, Why would you do that to me? So wait, let me learn. So if more, let's divide. I know you. It's basically this. If more is, if there is, a topic, an issue. Mm. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Mm. That's simple. It like big that, that, yeah. that, 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 that's it. Right. That's real yeah. though. Right. That's real though. We right. picked yeah. that up. Yeah. We right. picked that up. Yeah. We picked yeah. that up. Yeah. I, 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 I think I think that that's that's amazing because while you guys were talking, for some reason my mind does those things, but I was thinking oh, no, maybe no, 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 no. if more and less divide as in let's divide as in. If it's let's more, let's, let's let's break it apart co- co- and everybody co- co- yeah. come together to do this one. You do this one. You do this one, yeah. and let's bring everything together yeah. to make a unit. Yeah. So you know? so so ours is more um, about topics like issues. Right. Yeah. Right. So if there is an issue, let's talk, and let's, let's break it up. Talk about, yeah. 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 Now, yeah. First of all, yeah. this is the hottest podcast. In West Africa, nigga. thank I'm you, a sir. I'm gonna tell, 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 tell you that for a fact. No, no, you know why though? Because y'all, y'all actually let people talk. Yeah, yeah everybody yeah, else yeah. don't want. I mean, we don't let's, talk. Hear, so. let's talk. Yeah, 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 let's yeah, talk. Let's yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. So, Mutom, if I can just add a little bit to what you yeah, just yeah, said yeah, yeah. quickly, yeah, because we gotta go. But for me, I feel what you're saying. Even if we take it there, mm-hmm. Africa is huge. Very, and we're multiple. In terms big of dick our, energy is yes. what I'm saying. We big dick energy. <laughs> we, we big we dick energy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, it's cool. Yeah, I got too you. Much. Culturally, we're diverse. <laughs> it's true. BDSM. Africa on the web is big dick energy, nigga. What we're the fuck diver- are we doing? We're big dick energy. It's big dick energy. Come on. There's a. The, we have been forced to believe that our progress is in unity. Right. Okay. I no, no, no. Let me hear where you're going with this. I yeah. want to hear this. Because yeah. I thought, I thought it was. We've been not, forced not, to. And I wanted to make that point because you made that point. Right. Yes. But this is just a personal thought process. I've thought no, about no, no, this I'm, through and through. We're here for this. Yeah, we've been forced to believe that our only way to progress is unity. Okay. But I believe that the beauty of who we are is in our diversity. It's just yes. that we have to have more understanding for. I, I'm not Ashanti. But I don't know too many people that respect the Ashanti culture more than I do. Where and, are you from? Sure. Sure. I'm Ghana and in Zima. Wow. And Ikuapim. In Kroma State. That means you are Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are yeah. Nigerian. Yeah, yeah. We came from there. So you done your stuff. I, mean, I, I know my research. So, I, because I want to God body. crystallize God the point. Body. So I don't want to God talk about it. God body. But the beauty of I learned something from Mutombo because he tells me about how he grew up, and I learned something from my Ewe brothers, and I learned something from this, and I learned something mm. from that. We, we don't have to be united. We have to understand each other. Because the unity is never going to come. And that's like uh, dangling some trick in front of us that right. we're going to reach this unity point. We're, bro, even in Ghana, it's 36 different languages. It's all these tribes. How are we going to unite Africa before we seek collective mm. progress? It's mm. about respecting our differences to say, you know, my brother over there from Ashanti region is dope. And mm. I'm gone, and I'm still dope. And it mm. doesn't bring a conflict of interest. We can still work together, but we respect each other as Ghanaians, as black people, as Africans, whatever. But we don't have to unite necessarily because the word yeah. unity sometimes makes it look like yeah. at one day we all yeah. have to speak one language and we all have to be mm. one people with one vision. No, let Mutombo go be whatever he wants to be. Yeah. Let Bay do what he wants to do. Let Frederick do what, what When we sit like this, we respect our collective support, support, support yeah, our yeah. collective oh, contribution. Yeah. So that's what I mean. That's, big, that's big, big up. That's big up. That's big up. Yeah, big up. Big, big your question to Fred. Uh, Mark, I, 
Okay. 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 No, 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 because I, no, no, I want to be honest. Am I allowed yeah. to? Am I, am I allowed to ask him a, a real question? Yeah. Any question, bro. All right, I, right, right, right. like, Cause this nigga sitting over here fly. Robot. No, no, he's sitting over here fly with the sandals and shit. Like, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm asking you this. Ma matching with the nah, upholstery. Yeah. He, he's hitting yeah. me with the. Quam I, I did this for you. He's hitting really. me with the. I put my best gear on. Listen, can I ask a question or not? Yes, sir. Please do. Nigga hit me with the Kwame equipment shit. I'm saying, listen, you fly shit. When we go on the beach. Is it only the black girls or are you hitting the pink toes? Are you hitting the pink toes or is it only the black girls? Are we only doing? <laughs> hey, real, right the right. Hey, what are you doing? Real, what? real what? answer what? too. Shout out to my, my. Uh, is he about to say his wife? Hey, man. No, no, no. Oh my okay. God. He's about to go I, left. He's about to go. I, 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 didn't mean I crossed that. over twice. My side chick. But, but first of all, first of all, I'm not there's married. nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with there's Dr. Nothing. There's nothing Dr. Wrong. Umar. But I'm saying, I'm saying this from the huh? bottom of my heart. I, I grew up just idolizing black women. Mm. And if you ask me in my mind's frame, I should name my top 20 most beautiful women. I will say one black name after the other. And then if you say right. add another 20, it will probably be another 20 Same. black can, women. Can, and I can think I, it's can natural. I, can, I, can, I, can I add yeah. something on... Just to add on top of that, and, that, and first of all, let me let me pound you up on that. Yes, sir. Listen, I'm I'm keeping it 100. This is Dr. Umar listening. Yeah, I've seen every woman in the world, and I'm gonna tell you for a fact, I've seen white women. They they fine, Asian women fine. Yeah, uh, uh, Indian women fine. But 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 when I define Spanish, myself, Rican, yeah. when I define myself, I can only uh, it it only feels like I I get along with the women in my culture. But that's not it doesn't mean they. Every woman is beautiful, but I just like my black women because yeah, yeah, yeah. because I I can understand I guess some sort of a, whatever I'm going through. They understand and, you, and, man. and I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that in a good way. Love to all my shorties. That's all. I was, that's all I was asking. One of them got to pop one out for you, man. Listen we got to we got to make that happen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen We've been me. telling them. <laughs> I mean. Wait, wait, wait. What, about, what was, what was that little one. crazy laugh? What, what was that? <laughs> no, what, was, no. what, what, what was that? No. <laughs> all, I, all I heard was... <laughs> no, the way for was like, pop. Like, yeah, uh, we got to pop no, 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 But, but I, I do want to say I mean, this. No, no, we, we, on, we on the African tour. I want, I want to give a shout out to... Look, white women, beautiful. Asian women, I love y'all. Latin <laughs> women, I love... No, no, I'm saying in the beauty. But my sisters, this, this is who I'm here for. This is who we rocking with. And this is what we doing. And yeah. Fuck out. And I don't care if you don't like it. This is what we're doing. Shout out to all the black women, man. Fred and myself, <laughs> we are going back to the drawing board. To yeah. See if <laughs> it's actually good to have two kids. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Yeah, man. Sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah. we're done. Yeah. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> Revolution. At least, at least we've had, we've had fun. He's, he's the first. The first one. Wait, 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 we put shit in the concrete, my nigga. Mm. We grew from the concrete. It's talking drums. This is Matumbo. You understand what I'm saying? This is Matumbo. You understand? You look, look, look around what you're seeing. This is the gangster shit you never going to see in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Warrior. Talking drums, dummy. I just gave you the commercial of life, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. Sorry, guys. I am Charlie F. Ball. Let's divide. Without further ado, Chai Fred. Yes, sir. Oh, my head was hurting. Oh, my head 